Hello, everybody who might be watching. I'm Connor. I'm here on the main stage now, and I'm about to be joined by some very special friends. I thought they would be here with me, so I'm filling for time. And here they are. It's Barbara. <laughs> Welcome, Barbara. <laughs> Welcome, Connor. You've been away. I have been. I've been. I've yeah. been away, but I've been here before you. And there's Professor Brooke. Welcome, Professor. You went Brooke. to stage early, so welcome, Professor. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. It's wonderful uh, to be able to say hello to everybody uh, for this incredible journey which you have already started and continuing today, which is the highlight. As uh, innovation is a very, very particular kind of adventure. The key thing is how to connect studies with the practical impact you can have in reality through cooperation and also through being connected to concrete projects. I want to thank very much, especially the University of Applied Science scientists, not just one, but a number of them. Many of them are in Graz, and I'm very delighted that uh, uh, Christian Friedl and Ma Michael Terler have done such a good work in terms of preparing their teams for this particular event. I'm looking forward to a number of two hours of fantastic presentations. And uh, afterwards we will have a jury and I will join you again at uh, 6.40 Central European time, same time, same station. I love to hear the presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Brook. Nice to have you Thank with you. us. Off to you, I Barbara. Stay to give us a short welcome and uh, introduce why we're here today. Barbara, the floor is yours. So welcome everybody. Um, this is the first time actually I'm doing this on a Zoom event. So it's quite strange not to see um, the other faces because normally that is possible. So I'm relieved that at least um, Connor is here and the Professor Brooke is here. Um, I'm just doing this very shortly. Um, as you might have recognized, uh, Connor Satterley is your moderator and he is really good at doing that. I just want to say a few words. Everyone who is uh, pitching, no, everyone in the whole call, uh, please change your names uh, according to the venture you're working on. So this goes out just to the students. The venture you were working on is the first part, then the university you're coming from, and then your name. So that we recognize who you are, uh, which university you belong to. And in case you are a winning team, it's super important at the end um, that we can put you on stage and celebrate with you. So um, you might have noticed the session is recorded. This is really important. I just wanna say that. Um, then I want to introduce the jury members to you. It is Shika Trierweiler, um, and I have to look to the side because I wrote it down, I'm very sorry. Um, she's an innovation consultant, and she puts a lot of effort in brand perception uh, through purposeful communication and services. And she's a really good juror, and she is um, asking a lot of questions, so be prepared. Then we have Danby Royal. She's a writer, educator, and worked in the fashion industry, and she is a WSA winner of 2020. Um, and then we have Philipp Meyer. He's from the Volkshilfe Vienna, and he's the digitalization and innovation manager there. Um, we might have a fourth, Greta Ziegler, but unfortunately, she is really sick and in bed, but she will join, um, if possible, from time to time. Um, then I will tell you shortly about the pitch process, how it works. So all the ones that are pitching are in the backstage area now. Um, they will be brought to stage where they um, get prepared, share their screen. And when they're ready, a timer in this purple um, uh, square that you see, there will be, yes, there will be a timer. And then it goes down for um, four minutes. Um, we will be sharp on that, or better, Connor will be sharp on that. Um, after that, the uh, jury members will raise their hands if they have quest if they have questions, and they will be brought on stage. So this takes about two or three minutes, and um, then you can ask. You see yourself on the stage, then and then be, be prepared. Um, and then this is it. 
So I hand over. This was the, if you haven't changed your name according to the venture and the university, do it now. And Connor will remind you another time. And this is where I hand over to Connor and the stage is all yours. Oh, Barbara, what a well-structured and organized <laughs> introduction. It's amazing. I have a, a good friend of mine that's in Graz that could learn a little bit from this structure. Don't worry, Dr. Brook, it's not you. No, 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 it's somebody else. Don't oh, worry. Good. No, no, yes. no, it's an old uh, Dr. Brook. I would never in public, please. No, <laughs> no, both of you. It's really nice to have you here. I'm so glad you were here to introduce us. Thank you so much for setting us off in such an organized fashion. I am excited to be a part of this one. Uh, this is a lot of fun because you find some really cool ideas from some really, really cool people. So it's a pleasure for me to be involved. My name is Connor Satley. I'm a moderator for today, uh, an old European Youth Award winner back when that was a thing in 2014. Um, it's been since renamed, but that's okay, um, for my startup in Switzerland called GovFaces. And of course, part of the uh, Continued network for many years, uh, working with uh, World Summit Awards and European Young Innovators and Univation at every chance that they let me come in here and talk. So it's a pleasure to be uh, here with you today. I'll be bringing us through the pitches. Uh, so very quickly, let me tell you the voting criteria. First is the quality of the analysis. So each startup had to do an analysis of a problem that's faced by a particular uh, organization. So what is the quality of their suggested improvements and recommendations? Our jury will be thinking about that, but also how feasible is it? How realistic is it that this analysis and the suggested improvement can actually be implemented and can actually work? The second criteria is the quality of the pitch presentation. Now, we're not grading on how much of a great public speaker everybody is. We're grading on simply clarity, timing, and structure. So if you can be clear, and you can stick to the time, which is on this side of me, on my screen, and it's structured in a way that the jury can follow, then you've given a great presentation. And happily, many of the startups have already had a pitch trainer. Uh, we had this great pitch trainer who was in. Do you remember who it was, Barbara? Some absolute pro. Oh, it was me. It was me. That's right. That was me. Yeah, that's fine. I wanted to shout it out now. <laughs> no, no, sorry. But happily, we've gotten to work on a few of the pitches, so I'm hoping to see the best today. So the pitchers will be coming to this stage right here. They'll share their screen, and then they'll start. The timer will be visible for four minutes. And as Barbara said, the, pro the process is the jury will raise their hand, and we'll bring the jury members here to ask their questions. Um, and if the jury doesn't have any questions, I'll be asking them, which is totally, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Um, after the Q&A, the team will be sent back to the audience, and then we'll bring up the next pitch. So after all of the pitches, we'll take a short break, and we'll give you some more information then about what's coming up next. But there's a surprise later on, so keep in tune. <laughs> all right, so now... Have you already changed your Zoom name is the question that I was asked to remind you. If you haven't renamed yourself yet from your venture that you're working with and your university, please do it now. But if we're all ready, then I think it's time to bring up the first uh, pitch. Am I, yes, Barbara's nodding. Dr. Brooke yes, gave me the thumbs and up. Good luck to everyone. Yes, Go we'll ahead. see you two in a little bit then. Yes, and can I invite then Care Exchange from Greece to join me here on the main stage. This will take just a few seconds. We're all going to get used to me awkwardly standing here and filling time for about four to five seconds as each picture comes up. Perhaps I will steadily reveal details of my life to you throughout the evening. Uh, but not now. Now it's Care Exchange. Welcome and good to see you again. Hello. Thank you. Hi. Are you, know, my... you ready? Uh, well, I am ready. Oh, yeah, there's uh, my colleague who I... will also share the presentation. Yes. I Hello, will share Sebastian. The presentation. One moment. So I hope you can see my presentation now and can hear me clearly. Yes. Can you see your presentation clearly on your screen? Yes, I do. Great. All right. Excellent. Well, I can see you, I can hear you, and I see your presentation. So if you're happy, then whenever you're ready, go ahead and give us a start and good luck. Okay, cool. Thanks. So let's get started. Welcome to a presentation about Care Exchange. What is Care Exchange? 
Care Exchange is a donation app where people can see what kind of goods charities need. And the donation is made based on how full these needs of the charity organizations are. There are three main reasons why people don't use donation platforms. A lack of trust, no suitable platform available, and unawareness. And this is solved by Care Exchange through redirecting people's donations when charities actually need them, convert them into food right away, and connect people and charities and strengthen their partnership. But how does that work? First of all, data is collected in relation to the exact needs of the charity organizations. And then a ranking is created based on how fulfilled these needs are. In the third step, the algorithm converts the donated amount into goods which are actually needed by the charity organization the most. And last but not least, the donation is carried out by the cooperating supermarket. The donor receives to be sure afterwards a confirmation and the picture to be certain that his money has served its intended purpose. So what's our idea now? Like donations, the demand for producing companies is fluctuating. And sometimes this leads to low capacity utilization. In extreme cases, this means producing companies have to take measures like short term work, employ temporary workers, or even have to lay off some of the staff. Facilities are unused and in some cases overproduction has to be disposed of. What can I do with my overproduction or my idle time? I can support care exchange with my production site. But how does that work? We suggest to open the platform for producing companies for a membership fee so that additional opportunities for can be made and overstock or produced products for charities can be sold. In other words, new orders can be lucrated via the platform and charities could find more affordable products for their current needs. In addition to the SDGs, no poverty and zero hunger, local economies will benefit from a more sustainable workplace and companies can produce more responsibly. Therefore, energy intensive startup and shutdown processes of plants can be reduced and through waste reduction, climate action can be achieved. The donations collected through care exchange can be used more efficiently, which increases the motivation to use the platform. Because suppliers are not forced to let their plants stand still or let go of their employees, selling their production at cost will benefit them on a bigger perspective. For care exchange, this means that the used donated money will create excellent reputation and the word of mouth marketing and helps growing care exchange network further. There are also some further areas of, of application like online retailers. They can sell returns instead of throwing them away and large quantities can be sold on lower prices. Also, when we think about further areas of application, online department stores or local service provider in the social sector can come to our mind. Local service providers in Graz, such as Jugend am Werk or Fixit, offer the possibility that defective electrical appliances can be replaced by them and then passed on to the charity as functioning goods. This price for a repair is then refinanced via the app. This expansion reinforces our sustainability idea. Thank you. All right, great job, Care Exchange. Eight seconds early, too, on the timer. Well done. Thank so, you. right on time. So, I look to the jury, I look to Denby, I look to Chica, I look to Philip and Greta if she is with us. Uh, if they have any questions, to please raise their hand. <clears throat> I see a lot of hands coming up on the screen from the audience. That's nice. Feel free to add your reactions to uh, make a little cavalcade of, of happy thoughts. Um, and I'm looking to see from our jury if there's any. Yes, Philip uh, has a hand raised. So Philip Meyer, I'm not. Ah, here he comes. Yes. Hey, Philip. Hi, Philip. Welcome to the stage. Hello, everybody. Hello, Connor. Uh, so your question to Care Exchange. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, uh, a great presentation. Uh, you could tell that there's uh, you've uh, really done your uh, research thoroughly. Um, I have one question. Um, 
that uh, came up. And um, as I'm also working for a social organization, Volkshilfe Vienna, um, I'm curious um, about your thoughts on how to um, properly engage social organizations um, in on the demand side to um, adjust, you know, their logistics um, concerning um, how much of which kind of products they would need to suit them to your platform. Uh, so do you have any thoughts on, uh, on this? Uh, will you go to each organization one by one or, uh, yeah, have you given this uh, aspect any thoughts? Yeah, Sebastian, do you want to say something or should uh, I try? I mean, um, so you mean like, um, I, I think I, I didn't get the, the, the question 100%. So like how we would engage the organizations, the charity organizations? Yes, yes, because the social organizations have to put in the data, right? So you have kind of the demand side covered. And uh, every organization has a uh, different kind of processes behind that. So yeah. I can imagine that this will be a challenge uh, to, um, you know, also give the organizations the capacity that they know how to input the data and change their internal processes. Yeah, I mean, I think the basic idea is or this the solution for that would be the app. And I think, um, yeah, we would engage the organization separately um try to find a way how to yeah deal with the information flow so to say and then find a way to yeah to get the information what they actually really need uh at 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 the time so i think this would be the idea behind it okay philip thank you very much for your question we'll see you later um and I, I'm, I have one question actually that I'm going to sneak in. You guys have a tough time measuring your social impact because you can measure user numbers about how many people donate and how much money is donated. How do you measure the end impact of that money being donated? Hmm. Well, I think it can be measured rather good because you can directly measure what product and what quantity of the product uh, well went to somebody in need because that's also documented by the app in the network and also shown to the donator to give him feedback what happened with his money. So if you just track that and sum it up, I guess that should do the trick. Okay. Well, had an answer ready to go. So uh, Elizabeth is joining us. Oh, and Elizabeth is a juror as well. Uh, I didn't even know that. Uh, hi, Elizabeth. Welcome to the jury. Um, and happy to have you with us. Welcome hello. to the stage. Um, hello, uh, I'm Elisabeth from TU Graz. Um, and maybe I didn't get that uh, during your presentation, but um, how will this delivery from the producers to the customers that need the products, um, how will that work? Regarding the supply yeah. chain and everything, because as I understood, you provide the the data, uh, what is needed to the producers. And then in the end, the uh, the customers have to get the products somehow. Yeah, I think we we haven't dis discussed that yet so far, but in my opinion, a possible way could be to um, talk to the local companies, companies which are donating and then find a way, um, maybe the charities are on their route it wouldn't be a big like um, it wouldn't be um, yeah uh, um, yeah more uh, much more to um, or a bigger um, mm -hmm. not much more work and I think yeah like th like that we can try to find a solution but we um, to be honest we haven't discussed it yet so far yeah but I think it can work similar to before the add-on because before we brought in the production companies with our add-on it was primarily retailers which would supply the demand for the charities so the charities would pick it up there and they still do the uh, delivery to the their clients mm -hmm. and they would still do the same if it's a bigger company maybe you just need some additional logistics in between if it's like a bigger company or further away which which comes in and um, have you thought about uh, the uh, possibility um, that 
let's say consumers would need product A, but producers um, would donate or would give you to better prices product B? It's such a good question and it's such a shame I'm not going to allow them to answer it. <laughs> I know it's so good because I want to hear the answer too, but everybody has to get only 10 minutes yes. so we've got to move on. So uh, Elizabeth, stay here for just a second and bye Care Exchange. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank good you. pitch. Bye. And Thanks we'll see you guys us. again later. Okay, see you. And Elizabeth, since uh, you didn't get an intro at the beginning, I asked uh, so that I could say a few oh. words. And everybody here is so kind to speak English, which is my native language, uh, even though it might not be theirs. So I'm going to try. I'm going to try my best here. Something crazy, which is you're from Tiu Graz. This, of course, is easy to say. And from Gründungsgarage. Yeah, Gr Gründungsgarage. I'm Gründungsgarage. a board member there. It's an academic startup accelerator. Lovely. that we run together with uh, several universities here. And we are open also to the students of the uh, Universities of Applied Sciences. And so I'm really looking forward to all the presentations and thank you for the first one now. Um, so we'll see you again in just a little bit, Elizabeth. So uh, so thanks, Care Exchange. You guys can click uh, backstage, I think, and you'll head backstage. And then we'll go ahead and bring out the next set of pitching folks, which is from the, so there's actually two teams that worked on DBox. So I'd like to invite up the DBox team from Lithuania from Campus 02, please, if they could join me here on the stage. Be nice to have you with us. And now this awkward four or five seconds, it's brilliant. Hi there, Christian. Welcome. Hi, Kiona. Hello. Do you have other teammates coming? Yes, I think okay. my colleague Dominic will come as soon as possible because he will start with the presentation. So I hope so. <laughs> no problem. In case you can hear me, Dominic, on the lower band, there is this button you can click, which says main stage, and then you can come here. OK. There we are. All right. Perfect. So go ahead and share your screen and start whenever you're ready. OK. Dominic, you've just turned off so, your video. That's what you wanted to do, right? OK. Um, you can see my screen? I can see your screen, but you've turned off your video. Ah, OK. OK. There we go. All right. So, now go ahead. OK. Cool. Let's start. In our fast-moving world, innovations are the key for economical success. But in order to have long-term success, it is necessary to continuously improve your idea and business model. Now, let's do a trip to Vilnius, the capital city of Lithuania, to visit an innovative local company called D-Box. Dear audience, we are the Campus O2 team, DroneX, and today we are going to show you the product D-Box, use cases, detected business problems, and potential business model solutions. And that is the fabulous D-Box. It's a landing platform for drones with an integrated AI-powered software solution for autonomous flights. And you know what's best? It can fly 24 hours a day because of a special feature inside the box. On top of the drone, you can see a battery pack. And inside D-Box, there are six other battery packs and an autonomous battery swap system for nearly infinite flights. D-Box sells this platform. Everything else, like the drone itself, the flight permissions, drone operators, maintenance has to be organized by the customer. So where do you need autonomous flights? probably for inspection of construction sites or traffic monitoring in smart cities. Maybe you work as a security guard and do security patrols, or you are a food producer and you want daily checks if there is some crop damage. And of course, you can use it as an emergency service for public safety. These five use cases show us that the target customer of D-Box is no private customer, but mostly big companies and governments. And these customers are usually looking for an all-inclusive, budget-friendly solution that they can work with immediately. And that leads us to the following business problems. Thank you, Dominic. So we identified some business problems. Um, the first one is that there is a high acquisition value for customers if you buy D-Box. And furthermore, there is no customer binding due to just buying the one product, and that's it. So our solution for that would be to rent instead of buy um, D-Box, 
which will create a new value because you're becoming more of a full service provider by also providing long-term customer relationships. That includes maintenance, update, legal clearance, and a pilot as a service. Um, the revenue in this case would come from fixed monthly rate for customers. So there would be a minimum contract duration for six months. The second problem we identified was that there is no short-term solution for customers. And our solution for that would be to have a pay-per-use model. For example, if you're inspection and monitoring of construction projects, you can just um, rent this drone for, let's say, half a year. And every drone takeoff is registered and will be accounted on a quarterly basis. And the third problem we identified is that Vilnius alone is a little uh, small market. So there should be a global market strategy. And this can be done with partnerships and corporations, international ones. This will lead to international go-to company for aerial inspection documentations. The revenue would come from drone operators, education trainings, and also a kind of D-Box franchise. Perfect. So in order to visualize all this, uh, we created a small roadmap for the year 2023. And we start in the first quarter by defining a clear strategy, as well as also the, the USP and defining the real use cases we heard at the beginning. In the second quarter, we will concentrate also on partnerships and corporations, make some area mappings with a LiDAR censoring system, and also implementation of a marketing and sales department. In the third quarter, we have the international rollout, legal lobbying because of legal reasons, and also the service portfolio, such as pilot as a service and so on. In the fourth quarter, we scale this up and make updates, improvements, and customer feedbacks. So this leads us to a final USP, Nope, and sorry, providing we're, we're out of time. We have last, to cut off this the, the last sentence, <laughs> sorry. We, I can give you literally one more sentence just because I'm such a nice guy. This was it actually, so we are all done. Thank you for your attention. Okay, good, attention. thanks. Sorry. So let's look to the jury and let's uh, see if there's any questions from Philip, from Shika, from Elizabeth, from Danby. Looking to the jury. They're all deciding amongst themselves who has the most clever question. Yes, it turns out it's Philip again. So Philip, will you join us on the stage here? There you are, Philip, welcome back. So your question for the first D-Box team. Yes, uh, hello. Uh, well, um, first of all, uh, Really great analysis. Uh, very, um, very well done. Uh, congratulations for that. Um, there's not much to add from my side. I have just one question out of curiosity. Um, in your analysis, uh, was there one kind of uh, sector where you saw the biggest potential for um, this kind of applica uh, drone application? Um, so do you see more potential on the government side or um, private, uh, mm -hmm. private sector? I'm just curious if you've uh, discussed or analyzed this a little bit further. Yeah, um, congratulations for the presentation. Thank you very much Thank you. for this feedback. I really appreciate it. Um, Dominic, you want me to, or do you? Yeah, you can, yeah, we can answer. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we, we had a look at the use cases. This was actually one of the first things we did um, in our analysis. And um, of course, there are some more use cases we could identify, but we just took those five um, we had here. And from those five, um, it's hard to tell the biggest one, but I think the agricultural one could be really promising because we um, also saw some startups with some AI who provide, for example, an analysis of, of the farm fields when you see that there's something going wrong um, and it makes pictures um, with um, data analytics in the back and tells the farmer here on this spot, maybe you need to put a little bit more of um, stuff in order to get rid of, um, I don't know, bugs and stuff of that. So I think for um, yeah, for food production and farming, this could be a really promising field, but also for, for the application area of smart cities, um, like first detection and security. But this is depending on, on, on politics, you know, because they need a budget for that. And if they don't have enough money, they would say, okay, it's not necessary right now. Um, so the market would be good and, and high, but um, yeah, with politics, it's also a little bit um, complicated. Um, also with laws flying around the area, it's a little bit complicated, but uh, this would also be a really, really huge market in our opinion, yeah. Okay, 
Thank you very much, Philip, for the question. And thanks for the quick answer. Uh, so we have two more minutes. I'm going to add in just a very small question. Imagine for the moment that I am the CEO of DBox, and you walk into an elevator and you see me, the CEO of DBox. We're going on 20 floors. It's a very large building. And you have only those 20 floors. You have one or two sentences to tell me what your recommendations are for me as a company. Based on your analysis, you know what I do, you've done the analysis, and you have one or two sentences to tell me what the recommendations are, how would you summarize them? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I would answer this. Um, implement a short-term solution for customers um, because the, the costs of such a drone box, um, they are really high and it would work very well for, let's say, a project from a construction site or something that, that lasts only six months. And I wouldn't buy a drone landing box for just six months. So I would, I want to rent it. That's yeah. extremely clear to me. And you didn't even use until the 14th floor. So good job. Thank you. <laughs> good answer. Um, all right. So DBox, that's all the questions we have coming in for now. So thanks so much for the presentation. Good job. You can head back to the backstage. And I'd like to invite up the other DBox team. If I'm understanding my briefing right, there's another one from the Johanneum, which is going to join us here on stage that also worked on DBox. Yes, hello. Hello. Hi there. Nice to have you with me joining on the main stage. Is it just you or you have team members joining as well? I have a team member and she's having technical difficulties. Um, during the rehearsal, her Zoom crashed a couple of times. So hopefully she's now being able to join the call. Other, oh, here she is. And Moritz Bauer, he is uh, sharing the slides for us. Okay, great. Well, nice to have you with us. And I see your slides. I see you. I hear you all. So uh, whenever you're ready, go ahead and begin. Good. Thank you. Hey, Philip, sorry to bother you during your vacation. Thanks for the short meeting. Are you enjoying Thailand? Hi, Kitty. You're welcome. I'm having a great time. Cocktails before noon. I could get used to that. So what's up? We would like to give you an update and get to know your opinion on a new project that we're actually consulting. A company is from Lit Lithuania and it is called DBox, uh, which basically stands for drone in a box. They offer a commercial drone that can be controlled remotely and the weatherproof box is equipped with six batteries that allow the drone to fly without any interruption. Cool. And what are the use cases for DBox? Well, it can be deployed, for example, by municipalities or companies for traffic monitoring or public safety. Not bad. Does the company already have customers? Yes, uh, DBox is already collaborating with the municipality of Vilnius, but they are, of course, looking for a new segment. Interesting. So what are the key external factors that influence our client? That's actually a great question. One crucial issue is the economic situation, because the core problem is that limited target group. Uh, their main customer segment, so basically the municipalities, are struggling with the reduced budgets. I understand. Well. My approach would be to argue that using DBOX saves customers money in the long run. Compared to operating a helicopter, flight and maintenance costs are negligible. In addition, drones can be programmed for autonomous flight, so no operating personnel are required. Yes, exactly. That's a good point. We also thought about improving the customer service by developing customizable features on the drone that really fits the customer's needs. And we believe that this would really add a value to the product. I like it. And what about the legal issues? As far as mm -hmm. I know, there are many restricted areas from drones. We have to take that into account. If I'm not mistaken, in some cases, permits are required. Do you know anything about that? Yes. Well, actually, the European Union has unified the laws on the use of drones, but it is still real difficult to get a permit. We suggest that DBOX work together with a legal expert to really help to set up a process for obtaining the permits. Yeah, sounds like a plan. You also talked about limited customer segments in terms of the economic situation. Have you identified a new target group? Uh, yes, we actually did. In our opinion, the most promising are the organizers of festivals, concerts, major sporting and cultural events. DBOX could contribute to public safety by monitoring large crowds and preventing mass panic at an early stage. And also, the drone can also be used for advertising purposes. And we also had the idea of DBOX working together with a programmer to develop a custom software for the clients. So customization adds an additional revenue stream and hence improves the economic situation. 
That sounds very well thought out to me. What were your thoughts regarding the future development of T-Box? Yes, we actually conducted a three horizons model to get a grasp of the present and decide what could be done in the future. It will be very important for DVOX to focus on the customer segments in the second horizon and develop the new features in the third horizon. Got it. But how do you want to achieve this? Um, Active marketing and search engine optimization are crucial for attracting new customers. Currently, the company is quite hard to find by a search engine, and it's not really present on social media. The before mentioned programmer will allow us to offer new features to our clients. Excellent. I feel the team is on the right track. You already convinced me. I'm confident Deepbox will like the ideas too. Yeah, I'm sure they do. I really feel for the project, and we are ready to take off with Deepbox. Fantastic. Thanks. Good job, D-Box team. And I'm uh, jealous because he managed to work having a cocktail into a pitch. It's, uh, yeah, how did I not think of this? You know, I should be fired as a pitch trainer. It's uh, fantastic. And I love the beach in Thailand as well. Um, <coughs> so a great job with the pitch and right on time. Uh, let's look to the jury. Does the jury have any questions for the second D-Box team? Yes, Denby has a question. Denby, why don't you join us on the main stage here? and then you can ask your question. And where did you say you were on holiday there? Is that Thailand you said? Thailand, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where in Thailand are you? Koh Samui. Oh, wow, you're good. <laughs> I thought I would get you with that one, all right. But Denby has joined us now. Hi, Denby. Hello, hello. Um, yeah, I wanna say that was a great pitch. I love, <clears throat> I love how it was a little bit different and actually completely different than the other one too. So it's so cool to see you know, a solution looked at from different approaches and to get so much different insight into it. Um, but, yeah, but my question is about um, your sort of like proposed new revenue stream to be focusing on um, events and festivals and what have you. Um, I just want to know like where that fits into the um, SDG goals and if you're going to be sort of stepping back from some of the other areas that drones are like kind of marketed for and focusing mostly just on this one. Uh, no, uh, currently the main, the main um, customer segment are municipalities and they have a, uh, an, a cooperation with Vilnius as we presented in the pitch. But um, the, at the moment, the market is kind of small for that. And so we try to expand it. And the big advantage are the, the festivals and, and concerts before, because the, the whole premise is always the same. And uh, so the, you can really make use of the drone there. And uh, I think it is aligned with the sustainable development goals because the drone is, yeah, uh, needs almost no fuel to be operated, just electricity as an energy source. Um, and we definitely want to expand the, the company needs more customers. So we, we, we are not in a position to skip anything. We are expanding at the moment. Okay. Thank Thanks a lot for joining us, Denby. And I look to the rest of the jury to see if there are any other questions. I don't see any. So I guess I'll ask one myself. You had one recommendation, which was to engage with a legal expert about drone licenses. And it struck me at the time, don't you think that's something that DBOX is already doing? Where in your analysis did you identify this as a, as a, as a weakness? Um, we talked to, to one of the uh, members, one of the workers from DBOX, and he said, um, one good thing is that the European Union has unified now the laws regarding the usage of drones but it's really complicated. In his words, they give you 20,000 pages that you have to, to, to file uh, to get this permit. And that's a huge challenge for every customer because no one wants to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And we thought, okay, uh, if we set up a streamlined process, we take the customer by the hand and guide him through this process of getting a permit, that's, then we remove one of the obstacles that's maybe currently in the way of operating that drone. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what I was hoping to find out. So thanks very much, very clear. Okay, well, thanks very much Thank to the Deepbox team. Great job with the pitch, enjoy your holidays in Thailand. And um, yeah, now I have to go make a cocktail during the break, it's uh, it's only fair now, I think, you know, I'm even, in, I'm even dressed for holiday. Thanks very much for joining us. Okay, so the next pitch is gonna be uh, Digor Lab. Uh, Digor Lab team from Germany, will you join me here on the main stage? 
I don't even I don't even have a cocktail. I just have a big bottle of water. It's not fair. I'm jealous now. Die Girl Lab, I think, if I'm reading it correctly, from Germany, from Campus 02 as well. Or maybe it'll just be me for a while. That's okay. While we wait. It's a bobblehead of me. <laughs> this was my emergency fill for time trek, and uh, I've already used it, so don't even know what's going to happen the next time I need to use it. So I guess it's just me. We're waiting for Digger Lab. What shall we do in the meantime? There they are. <laughs> Thank goodness. Welcome to the main stage. Hi, sorry. Uh, I don't know Hello. why they put me inside. I'm, I'm the owner from Digger Lab, and I was not the one who pitched today. <laughs> Wow. I tried okay. to block it, but uh, then they put me inside. I'm sorry. That's okay. Don't worry. So what do we do now? Shall we do a pitch or shall we not do a pitch? We shall not do a pitch. All right. So we're waiting for your colleague. Do I understand that correctly? At least I'm less lonely now. All right, then. Uh, well, I'm I'm looking to my friends in the back room, backstage, to see what we should be doing. Should we switch to Educat? Ah, nope. Digger Lab is, oh yes, Educat is coming. All right, so thanks very much to the Digger Lab team member that came in to say hello to me. It was a brief but amazing friendship that we had. We're gonna skip that team and come back to them later and look to Educat. And I see already uh, Katarina, or Olga, sorry, is here. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. And your colleague as well. Oh my goodness, lots of people now are streaming into the room. Sorry for the accelerated manner in which you jump into the stage, but now hopefully you arrive full of energy and ready for the pitch. So would you like to share your screen? Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> okay. So. All right. <laughs> All right, whenever you're ready, go right ahead. This is an EDUCAT uh, mentor meeting in the year 2025. Hi. Hey, thanks again for choosing me as your study abroad mentor off the EDUCAT marketplace. I'm glad you went this route. I wish I had done so when I was in your position. Why is that? When I was trying to study abroad, I went with one of the local agencies in my home country. It cost me an arm and a leg to get a consultant who just recommended me to a university they were partnered with. Wow, it seems wrong. Is the EDUCAT any better? That's actually the nice part about EDUCAT. With it being a marketplace, the bias of the universities is reduced and you get the most options possible. Plus, it's far cheaper. Interesting. Are there any other marketplaces like EDUCAT right now? Not really. EDUCAT holds a a uh, temporary competitive advantage and has rushed the market in past years to establish their brand in Europe. Other places like China, India, and USA have large legacy agencies that control the market. How did they come up with that strategy? Well, Educat enlisted the help of some business consultants to improve their initial idea. They conducted research on the business concept and with the help of tools like Blue Ocean Strategy Canvas, SWOT Analysis, and Porter's Five Forces, they improved their strategy. And what did that look like? They suggested that Educat should translate their website to English and other European languages. This plus the modification of the website reduced the complexity of the process of getting a mentor. Yeah, it only took me like a few clicks and it was translated into Russian as well. Yeah, Educat has come a long way as an international company. The initial website included a phone call with an Educat employee to get a mentor. Now it's automated and search engine optimized. Using Google Ads, Educat should be the top research result in most European nations now. Uh, how did they grow so rapidly in Europe? In Europe, they had more of a blue ocean for expansion. Uh, they didn't waste their time and established themselves as the biggest fish. It won't be long till large companies in China, India, and the US copy this same platform. Weren't resources a problem for growing so quickly? 
Well, mentors like me were little to no problem to get. Thanks to a SWOT analysis, Educat knew that there would be more than enough current students willing to offer their services to their marketplace. This gave current students some extra money. Incoming students got personal mentors and Educat got enough users for fast scaling. Maybe one day I will also try being your own mentor. Are you an Educat employee or a freelancer? A freelancer. That's why this marketplace scaled so fast. Every new market Educat enters creates exponential growth as more new mentors join in new locations. Students looking to go to the, uh, abroad in these locations get immediate access to local mentors. So wait, Educat, does Educat just do consultation for students go, looking to go abroad? As a mentor off the marketplace, I only offer consulting. Educat, the company itself, offers some extra services like help with visa documents, financing, insurance, and student accommodation. These complimentary services are their rising star. The consulting is Educat's cash cow. Uh, that's where their money and main mainly comes from and what enables them to offer those extra complimentary services. Between students, consultants like you, and complementary services, that's quite a few cash flows. Sure is. I hope you can join one day and help students with their study abroad experience. Let's get started. All right. Good job for the Educat team. All the way from 2025, there's a little bit of time travel involved, which I always am a big fan of. So thanks for the sci fi. So I look to the judges. Uh, already, I see a question coming in from Shika. Uh, Shika, will you join us on stage? Hi there, Shika. Howdy. Merry Hello. Christmas. So first of all, congrats for the pitch. By the way, I'm loving all those pitches. Connor, if you were the, the coach, con I congratulate you. No? They okay. came up with this one entirely themselves, I think. Oh my God, so creative. Well, people, um, I wanted to ask you, something very similar to what MBS before to the previous team. So how do you see the SDG aspect of Educat? What aspect, sorry. Yeah, how do you see the sustainable development goals around this project? Uh, well, uh, being a marketplace, it operates a lot more efficiently. So you have less, larger companies taking up bigger spaces and it allows people to work uh, more individualistically. Olga, I, see. I see. Um, could you, did you think about maybe suggesting any possibility for democratizing the access to education, like financing and stuff like that? Um, yeah, so that's, so since it's a marketplace, you have mentors coming in who are the users bringing in the money for the company itself. And since Educat is just working as a marketplace, it's not really selling uh, a big product there. It's making money off of the transaction in between. And that excess cash is what will be used um, to offer, like we were saying, complimentary services for like uh, student housing, uh, visa documents, stuff like that. And that allows there to be better access for sure. Uh, okay, yeah. Thank you Thanks, very Shika. much. Hey. One to add in on my side, since I don't see other hands from the jury, is on feasibility of your recommendation. So the very first recommendation that I heard was translated into as many European languages as possible. I've been on the side of the implementation of that with my startup with GovFaces. It, which won the European Youth Award. It was based in Switzerland, but we translated it into something like 12 languages. This is much more difficult and creates a, uh, than it sounds and creates a lot of tech burden and tech debt. Every new feature is going to be need to be translated into something like 20 languages. How feasible is this? Uh, did you get a sense for that in your analysis, how feasible that suggestion is? Yeah, it will definitely take a lot of time to translate into all of these languages. So it's it's really the best way to start, of course, in English and then start adding more languages, maybe. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that is indeed what you said. Start by English and then work towards the rest of the European languages. Okay, yeah, that sounds a bit more feasible. 
Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much to the Educat team. Thanks for coming in and saving me from my loneliness and awkwardness. And uh, I appreciate it. And great pitch. Good job. So uh, next, we're going to invite up the contact team. Uh, contact from Hungary. Yes. Welcome to the contact team. Hi. 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 Nice to have you here. So uh, I would love to invite you to share your screen. There it is already. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and start. OK, great. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, to jump straight into the topic, I would like to show you how my last call with my grandma went, and maybe some of you can relate. Hi, Grandma. Oh, hello, darling. It's so nice to see you. Is everything working all right? Not really. Like this new technology, it's so complicated. I don't really understand. And oh no, oh, poor I... grandma, poor Eva. I think we all know I... that it's truly really difficult to stay in contact with our older family members who struggle when it comes to modern technologies. Contact is solving this problem by offering a simple physical box with two buttons that enables older people to see their younger loved ones on a TV screen in an easy manner. And younger people download Contact's app and can be sure that their grannies actually do not keep on hanging up accidentally. And that way, said grandma is happy again. And how are we helping Contact to launch their product? We started by identifying main issues and creating a variety of solutions. For example, our pricing model is based on the Lean Canvas and we identified key partners and funding options by using the business model canvas, as well as applying buying personas and a three horizons model analysis to solve the issue of a diminishing and changing target market. And how do we put a price on this cool item in the B2C market? First of all, the box itself is offered at a cheaper price with the off option to customize boxes and having boxes of higher quality materials that are a bit more expensive. So the app itself is offered as a freemium pricing model, meaning that basic features and ads are included in the free version and additional features are then available in the premium version. Additional features could be screen sharing, so you can show pictures of recent family get togethers. And also um, you could do the group FaceTime calls, meaning everyone can interrupt everyone just like a normal family get togethers. A strong network of supporters is critical for long-term success of any startup. So here are some of our options. A big player in any, gov uh, gov in any market is the government and you can't really get around them. So having them on your side is probably a good thing. For example, by reaching the human associations uh, of pension and healthcare funds, as well as insurance companies. In general, financial support is crucial to startups and the Startup Factory and Incubator Program in Hungary offer programs to do just this. And in a Catholic country like Hungary, where can you reach your target market and also get financial support? Church. It's where the elderly mingle. So approaching them as a partner will for sure be beneficial. And in the next few years, apart from the additional features mentioned before, older people should certainly be able to make calls themselves and show their grandchildren just how many different cookies they've made for Christmas this year. Other nice to haves would be voice recognition and an integrated photo printer or the efficient use of AI to facilitate the handling of the box. But most importantly, contact should keep their eyes on new technological developments that can be simplified and adapted to the needs of the ever changing older generation. We hope that our suggestions will help Contact to launch successfully. And here you can see the hardworking people behind this project other than Alina and myself. And now to conclude, I would like to tell you about last week when I was at my grandma's place because she deleted the internet again. But don't worry guys, since I'm part of her personal IT help desk, I got us back online in no time and received cookies as payment. But to be honest, Contact would have also made my life a lot easier and I would also sleep better knowing my grandparents never have to be alone when we are apart. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you very much, right on time. And uh, yeah, indeed, any, any presentation with happy grandparents is always happy and we see all the hearts come in. 
clearly you've stacked the audience with grandmothers and I will accept no ex other explanation. So well done. Um, <laughs> let's look to the jury to see if they have any Thanks questions. Have any questions. Yes, uh, uh, so Philip, why don't you come in? Uh, and Elizabeth, you can come in as well too, if you'd like. Whichever one of you makes it here first gets to answer that. Yep, it's Philip. So Philip, why don't you ask the first question? And Elizabeth, feel free to join us as well and you can ask the next one. Go ahead, Philip. Yes, uh, thanks for the uh, great presentation, uh, great acting skills also. <laughs> um, um, I'm not sure if I got one uh, aspect right um, concerning the pricing of the hardware that you mentioned. So mm -hmm. um, was it, did I understand it correctly that you actually want to offer a differentiated pricing model for the hardware? So there's like cheaper devices and uh, more premium devices. Can you elaborate yes. a, a little bit on this? So uh, in the first phase, now in the development phase, so the most important thing is that you get a cheap box. And since this should be kind of a unique value proposition that is cheaper than other um, options and substitutes, um, you have the cheaper box, but then also you can like in the long run to generate more revenue, you could offer higher boxes that are made of higher quality material, for instance. And also we said that maybe the option to customize boxes where you have like some pictures of family members or stuff, you can get creative with this one. And so that would be just a simple additional option to generate revenue. Okay, thanks, Philip. Uh, Elizabeth, your question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I really like the product. Um, and I was wondering if you, uh, as you have thought about uh, partnering up with charity organize uh, with um, governmental and health organizations, if you have also thought about uh, getting TV stations on board or internet or phone providers. Yes, because as a matter of fact, they... we did. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting you. <laughs> But yes, we did. We um, didn't want the pitch to be too long because of time issues, of course. But TV shows were actually one of our partners as well. We wanted to feature them in morning shows because, of course, um, the older generation are people that still watch morning shows. Um, and also this TV show in Hungary that is like um, the Shark's Tank, where you can pitch your um, okay. startup ideas. It's also one of the partners that we wanted to mention to our okay partners in Hungary. Yeah, so basically we also dependent on the user and buyer persona because usually also the younger people uh, buy these products. We had a differentiating marketing strategies because of course um, on social media, younger people um, check it out more or less. And if you want to do something on a to, like a TV advertisement would be something maybe in the longer run because it's a bit more expensive. And since usually the younger generation is the buyer, um, we've more thought uh, in the direction of social media as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was not uh, thinking about uh, partnering up with uh, some marketing um, company or uh, for doing marketing, but rather as a channel. How will the uh, people get your products or the startup products? You can also partner up for distribution. So that, uh, for example, where people would buy uh, their phones, they could also get your devices? So uh, first we've talked to Contact and they said a priority is to first only sell it in the web shop because of also uh, money issues. But in the long run, of course, you could also think of this as a channel. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks very much, okay, Elizabeth. You. Appreciate you being here. And thanks very much to the Contact team. That was a really great pitch and uh, yeah, really clear recommendations for the contact team. I think they're lucky to have you looking out for them. So thanks. And uh, yeah, appreciated having you here on the stage. So well, let's go to the next uh, team, um, which is, uh, we're, I guess we're gonna take a break now. Nope, no, we're not gonna take a break. We're gonna keep going because we're champions. So the Oter team from Germany, from Campus O2 is gonna be next. Can the Oter team from Campus O2, join me here on the stage. Awkward moment number 12. Here we are, hi. Hello. Nice I'm uh, always hi. so desperate for somebody to be around me. That's Those are the funny longest five seconds. <laughs> ah, it's yes. brutal, it's brutal. It gets worse every time, but it's so nice having you here. Thank you for joining. Do you have teammates joining as well or? I will be the only one speaking. The others are cheering in the back. <laughs> All right, nice. Well, then you can go ahead and share your screen if you have slides. Yes, thank you very much. 
That little heart That's coming up me. is probably from one of your team members there. Oh, uh. hi guys. <laughs> Good, then let me check if the full screen mode uh, is kicking in and we're ready to go. Hello. <laughs> I'm Varvara Bejanova uh, with Campus O2, and today I'm happy to talk to you about The Author, uh, an awesome German company uh, who is trying to make our world a little better and a little tastier. Uh, Author is about an old drink without trade-offs. Many people want to find an alternative uh, to milk products, and oat milk uh, is a great alternative, and Author uh, provides an oat milk in uh, fresh and local in barista quality with low waste uh, at fair price and very tasty without adding any sugar. Uh, the author is about the ecosystem. Machines are rentals uh, and everything is basically done automatically. So you have an oat milk as a service. Uh, even the uh, ingredients for the oat milk are uh, ordered and delivered automatically. So the customer uses these author packs to produce the fresh milk, uh, oat milk at the uh, push of the button. Uh, the main customers of the author at the moment are baristas at the cafes. But what about their customers? Just imagine, you're at your favorite cafe, enjoying your favorite latte macchiato, looking out of the window, it's raining a little, and you're feeling nice and cozy and warm, and you think, this is the moment I want to keep, and this is the moment I want to relieve in the comfort of my home. I want to be able to enjoy the same quality of my favorite hot beverage, also in the comfort of my sofa. Well, we have good news. The author is coming home. Now you can enjoy your old drink at the swirl of a spoon. The author is coming home is our initiative to attract consumer market. Uh, we want to enable people to craft oat milk at home using their existing home uh, cooking equipment. And the nice side for the author, the margins are driven by selling ingredient packages, which is the uh, more profitable and uh, less cost uh, um, intensive part of the business. So we want to implement this in three stages. First, we hook up uh, the uh, customers to the drink with a spoon. Uh, they taste it at the cafes and they get a tasting pack package for home uh, to be able to uh, swirl it at home in the pot. And if they are tired of swirling, they can go to the stage two and utilize Thermomix or other substitutes for home production. The market potential here is amazing. Uh, only in Germany, there are 7 million households that own a Thermomix, and we're not even talking about the alternatives yet. Like this, we can spread uh, the brand and uh, prepare the stage for launching the retail machine uh, and uh, the development costs of a retail uh, machine uh, for the home usage uh, can be covered by this stage two. Uh, and in the stage three, we can have uh, the actual machine that people can brag about to their friends. Uh, so the author is coming home uh, for this. Uh, we adjust the recipe and packaging to make it usable at home. Uh, we keep the price level uh, to stay uh, to keep the same margins as in B2B model. Uh, we um, commercialize it via e-commerce only. On the one hand, it's more cost effective. On the other hand, it creates an exclusivity for our customers uh, and uh, the promotion uh, strategy uh, is to start uh, with uh, uh, donating the packages, the small uh, stick pa packages to try uh, the comfort of the altar at home. Uh, and then, of course, um, leveraging the social media and engaging with our target audience. So keep tuned. The altar is coming home. Thank you for your attention. All right, nice. There's two things I'm going to remember. One is oat milk as a service, and the other is oater is coming home. Both of these are not things that I thought I'd hear today, but I was very glad that you're here to deliver them. Uh, Shika is already raising her hand. So Shika, why don't you come on stage here and join us? Yes, Shika, the floor is yours. Oh my God, every time I have to unlock the camera. Sorry for that. So my dear, that was a very interesting presentation. But now I, you got me very curious because the thing about the author is that uh, the, the money is really coming from selling the, the capsules to make the, the oat milk, yeah? And if I got this right, the author is coming home, which is a beautiful claim for a campaign. 
uh, by that, you were suggesting that there's going to be this powder oat milk, right? That you can just mix at home. My concern about that is that the all the quality and everything around the milk they produce with this machine wouldn't be reached with a powder that you just add to water or whatever, you know? Yeah, I, is it, could, yeah. Could, I, could I just uh, maybe add on to the question? So, uh, Shika, I think you raise a good point, but we know right now that the OTER is working in business contexts, right? Exactly. And, and your context, your your suggestion to them is let's bring it home. So I guess, Shika, could I rephrase the question in saying, is would home consumers experience the product any differently than business consumers? Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that the question? Right yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, the answer is yes. They will be able to experience it because we provide the package with uh, the uh, recipe. Um, the machines, the altar machines, are all about. Uh, cooking and swirling at the right temperature in the right pace uh, for the right amount of time. And this is what we can enable also at home using the home cookers, uh, but also with your hand, uh, it can be possible. Uh, and uh, this is exactly the uh, this special uh, the special thing about Otter is actually their recipe and their powder, uh, which is used in the machines. Uh, so uh, to enable uh, consumers also to enjoy this quality at home, um, uh, will be actually to share uh, this um, uh, this recipe in the end of how to utilize the powder to achieve the same creaminess and the same um, uh, the same consistency um, uh, of the tasty drink. Okay, I think I cannot make another one, right, Connor? Ah, uh, well, we have Denby waiting to ask one, so, so then I'm going to give the right. stage to Denby Thank just you. to make sure we keep spreading it around. <laughs> Thank you. So Denby, join us, uh, and um, please feel free. Wonderful. Okay, hi. Um, I love that and that your taglines were really good and um, that's one of my favorite things at the end of a pitch is when you just have that one little clincher that sticks with you. Um, but my question is about, um, yeah, yeah, cheers to you. My question is about the waste component. Um, so now that we're bringing odor home and that everything is in these little individual packages, I wonder if sort of in the long term, um, any type of like a circular packaging or, you know, reusable packages where maybe like they can, you know, con consumers can order it more in like a, a bulk form and then have that like refilled. Or if there's any ways that you've thought of to uh, make this a little bit more sustainable. I was hoping you would ask this question. <laughs> So the, for the small packages, um, uh, as a very starter, at this stage one, we were thinking about the biodegradable package, um, uh, for example, corn-based packages, uh, so that you can uh, uh, compost them uh, without any concerns. Um, you can also produce packages with some seeds in there that you can plant in your kitchen uh, for, so, for some herbs uh, to, to season your drink in the end. Um, this is for the small ones. And of course, uh, if we're moving to the stage two and offering it uh, for real home use with the home cookers, um, and then of course the, the home sized uh, packages have to be offered. Right now for the, um, uh, for the commercial uh, product, uh, the size is um, more or less for 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 uh, for a bigger consumption, but for family size, so that you can produce one or two or five liter of of the oat milk freshly. Um, uh, the packages have to be uh, developed in 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 the appropriate sizes, uh, and this ordering uh, should be enabled in this way. Uh, and I'm happy that you mentioned also uh, the possibility of refill packages um, uh, that you can send back, um, although. So this has to be uh, clarified uh, from the cost point of view, because if we're offering it uh, via e-commerce only, uh, the logistics might become a problem. So there we might be uh, more interested in uh, partnerships with uh, uh, package-less um, um, stores 
for example. Um, I'm not sure what's what's there in, in, in Germany. In uh, Austria, we have GAN um, as, uh, as one of the examples. Uh, and uh, partnering up with these kind of stores uh, would be also an opportunity that we are delivering um, uh, this uh, uh, to the stores and uh, people can refill their um, glasses uh, at the stores, yes. All right, thank you so much. I think it's a it's a really compelling campaign and thanks for the great questions as well. Isn't it great when a jury member asks just that question you were hoping for? Like, yes, I feel, so, it's, it's I feel like so good for you. I you won. You. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank so, you. Thank you Thank you, very you much. Denvi, thank you, Shika. And thank you to the OTER team, all right. Uh, so let's go to the other OTER team. I, I think that there's a second OTER team uh, from uh, uh, Johanneum as well coming up. Yes, I see. No, no, it's just me again. <laughs> oh, great. Hello. Welcome. Hello. It's nice to have you. Boy, I'm getting really thirsty with all the talk of oat milk. Fine. And then you you put delicious oat milk behind you. Now I'm now I'm <laughs> thirsty and jealous. But it's nice to have you here on the stage. I can see you, I can hear you, and I can see your screen. So Perfect. whenever you're ready, great. take it away. Thanks. Dear audience, today I would like to welcome you into my coffee shop, Julian's Place. Good morning. I would like a cappuccino with the tasty oat milk from last time, please. Of course. Here you go. Tastes amazing. You really stepped up your game. What did you do? Well, we rented this new machine from a German startup called The Alter. And what really sets them apart from the rest is the fermentation process right within the machine. It adds a great taste, rich in flavors without adding any artificial sweeteners. And the best is, I don't have to run all the time to get liters of milk and I have so much less weight now in my old coffee shop. That sounds amazing. I mean, I love to come to your coffee shop, but I want this machine at home too. Actually, that's possible. My consultant friend will explain it to you. Before we go into detail, let me explain our starting point first. Since the older already has a really advanced and elaborated strategy for the market entry into B2B, we decided to focus more on the future horizons and how they can strengthen and expand their market position by addressing the B2C market. So to evaluate their business opportunities in the second horizon, we conducted a SWOT analysis and applied the value proposition canvas, same as the blue ocean model for the future strategy. So there are two options now. <clears throat> Either sell the processed oat milk through machines in retail markets or sell the machines plus the product mix directly to the cu customers and their homes. Now let's switch to the possibilities for those two markets. In retail, the altar offers customers the possibility to buy high quality oat milk without the high amounts of packaging waste. And the main strength, strength of this B2C market is the low R&D effort. So although apart from the sustainability, it offers not that much differentiation to already established products. So the offer to the home market takes it a step further. The consumer would be able to produce high quality oat milk in his own home without running any errands. So this provides a significant competitive advantage. Although it would also be connected with investments in R&D, we know that to adjust the product to the home market. So what are we recommending as a B2C strategy for the auto? First, in the short term, the products can be replaced in sustainable supermarkets to directly market the product to the end consumer and reach the relevant target group. Then um, to diversify the revenue streams and strengthen the ecosystem, the product can be sold directly to the customer via e-commerce. What needs to be consider considered to capitalize on, cap on the competitive advantages in the de development of the new home market machines? Our analysis has shown that the, although the competition is intense, they either lack sustainability or taste. Therefore, the author would clearly differentiate by providing high quality to the fermentation process, to sustainability, 
and by adding customizable amounts and a variety of product mixes. And finally, by having the most convenient product. See, I told you, with a little bit of patience, you will be able to afford, you will be able to do your own deauto milk at home soon. I cannot wait for this machine to be on the market. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, right on the limit to with two costume changes. It's a first. We have somebody on the beach in Thailand. You know, we have time travelers from the future, but nobody had costume changes, at least not yet. So congratulations. Really Thanks. nice pitch and very clear too, I think about what your recommendations were. So I, I looked to the jury to see if they have any questions. Before they come in, I had one for the last group that I'll ask you instead while I wait for the jury to raise a hand, which is, when a company makes a decision to sell only to B2B, that's a very difficult decision. Everybody likes to sell to consumers. There's billions of them. So they must have spent a long time as the founding team of Oter deciding to focus on B2B. Yes. Why, is, why is it that you think they have not yet focused on the B2C market? Actually, um, we talked to them. They explained it to us really detailed. They focus on the B2B, B2B market right now because of the machines, because they're really expensive, they're huge, and they're renting it for now. So they're not selling it, but it's the plan for the future. So we try to think outside of the box and look into the future horizons. So to make it happen for us as well, because... We don't live in Germany, we live in Austria and we want this milk at home too. Sure, that's interesting. Who do you think would be their first B2C clients? Project into the future and think your consultancy has been accepted. Do you think that uh, a family of four or do you think a, a student or young professional, what sort of segments should they be thinking about in the B2C market? I think people in our age are also in the future that like the target group students because we think more sustainably into the future and we want to make more sustainable choices like not want to buy the normal milk as it's as it is still call, called but mm -hmm. I think oat milk will be the normal milk in the future so I think younger people like say the the age range from 20 to 40 it, it's a big range but I think that's the that's the thing for the future. Very cool. Okay. And what is the number one challenge you think they would face with a B2C strategy? Is it getting the information to people about, hey, you can buy this now? Or is it maybe the production? Or is it maintenance? Where do you think their biggest issue would come from in B2C that they don't already face with B2B? I think the biggest issue is the development of the new machines and how to really focus also on these five points we presented at the end and combine them with a affordable machine. Of course, it, can, it should come with a price due to its high quality, but still it needs to be, there needs to be an interest as well. So it cannot be too expensive. And we looked at the competition and the most of the existing machines offer around their, their, their cheapest machines around 250 euros. So the auto could go a bit above due to their higher, higher quality, but not that much. Yeah. Okay. So the price is the biggest issue. Price would be a big issue. Yeah, indeed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thanks very much. I was a pleasure to be your one person jury. It doesn't seem like we have questions from the jury. So I'm glad I got to just pepper you with all the questions that thank I didn't get so to add in. But thank you. Thank you for your analysis and your recommendations. And great job with the performance per thank pitch you. presentation. Thank you very and, much. Uh, Thank you. Okay, so you guys head back to the backstage and I invite up uh, Safe You, uh, also from Johannem, uh, working with Safe You from Armenia. Hello, you're very quick. Oh, that's a, that's a pleasure. It's no, so nice to have you here. Welcome to the stage. All of you, we have a small army. This is great. great. All right, so I hear you, I see you, I see your slides. You might just want to switch to presentation mode. Yeah, there we go. Fantastic. So um, uh, you have a video playing, right? Uh, when you shared your screen, did you check the box of optimize for video clip? I can try and help you out just a tiny bit, but also in my own self-interest. If with Zoom you share your screen, there's a little box that says optimize for video clip. 
And if you don't click it, it might be a little bit choppy. That's OK. Okay. All right, let's go whenever you're ready. You could start. Don't hear anything. No, there's no sound. But don't you hear us or? No, I can hear you just fine, but I can't hear the video clip. Now we are talking to it, but I think Milena is. Are you here us as a person or? I hear you right now as you're speaking to me, but I hear nothing from the video clip. No, but I don't hear. Milena didn't start to talk. <laughs> Aha. Well, I, I guess that would be Milena the problem. At all. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, now no, we can, can hear, hear you, Milena. <laughs> I'm oh. sorry. Okay. Sorry. Now I understand. So she was talking on Zoom this whole time. Got okay. it. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. Our, our tech guy is the nicest human being on the planet. He's so nice. His name is Alexander. I think I met him yesterday. He's a very nice guy. And he just gave you four minutes back on the clock. Very kind. So do you want to <laughs> do you want to start over? Yes, thank you. OK, then go right ahead whenever you're ready. <laughs> Woo! Ooh, <yeah. laughs> what a great night. But now I must go home. It's already super late. Yes, you're right. Get home safely and text me when you're home, OK? Who doesn't know the situation? You're in front of a club after a fun night, and suddenly you feel insecure about going home alone. and. To be honest, those feelings aren't without any reason. According to the facts, violence is a big problem all over the world. But as every country is a little bit different, here are some facts about Austria. In Austria, every fifth woman has experienced physical or sexual violence since the age of 15. Only in the past year, 29 women were murdered. So as you can see, violence against women is a problem even in a developed country like Austria. Oh, don't worry. I have Safe You on my phone, so nothing will happen. Um, what is Safe You? Well, let me explain. Safe You is a freely accessible app which offers immediate help in violent situations. There is an audio recording function of incidents for later legal evidence and also medical, legal, and social support. And you have discussion rooms where you can exchange ideas with other women. And the best thing about the app, it sends your exact geolocation to your contacts. Wow. And do you really think that that will work when someone attacks you? Oh, yes. The ex of my friend was treating her for months. One day he turned up outside her college and started abusing her. Luckily, her lord had advised her to download Save You and it saved her life. Wow. Where I can download Save You? Uh, right now, that's the problem. It's only available in Armenia, Georgia, and Iraq. Oh, no. But as I can see, Safe You would create safety of women in our society all over the world. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about what is unique about Safe You? Sure. Even though there are already several products with the same purpose on the dark market, Safe You still has a strong USP. None of the other apps has the ability to seek professional help and the possibility to communicate via forum. In addition, these products don't offer documentation options and some of them are chargeable. Wow, that's great. Actually, do you have already an idea how would you promote this product in, say, in Austria? Yes, that's a really good question. Our team used different tools like Portis 5 Forces, 3 Horizon, and We Are IO Analysis to analyze the market. And we found out that in Austria, the highest risk we could identify is the bargaining power of customers. And we would highly recommend B2B and B2C promotion for a strong and trustful image. Regarding to B2C marketing, we would suggest email, mobile, and web push marketing, SMM, SEO, and paid search advertising. And for the B2B marketing, we think participating in trade fairs, workshops, startup submissions, and discussion would work. 
And of course, seeking partners through media presence will be also be useful. What do you think? Would safety make a difference when you're in such an insecure situation? If the answer is yes, I can only say download the app and check it out as soon as Save You is available in Austria. Yay, all right, great. Thank you very much for the presentation. Yeah, um, and the first one that started with a club party, which uh, I obviously felt like it was okay if I joined in on. Uh, so I felt very welcomed there immediately by your team, thank you. Um, so already Shika's just uh, taking the lead. Join us, Shika. Hi girls, congrats for the presentation. Quick Hi. question, when you mention a B2B partnership, do you, are you envisioning the usage of, for instance, I have a working colleague and he's harassing me or something, or what, what, what did you mean when you mentioned B2B partnerships? Yeah. Um, the idea behind the app is that we, as a woman, we don't have to pay for the app. So the customers more or less are um, for example, governments or NGOs, and therefore we need P2P marketing to yeah get in touch with them and to find our customers. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So it's B2B marketing, not a B2B client, actually. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because also when you use the app, and um, you can send uh, to three contacts, so your friends, and also you can send it to the uh, NGOs and uh, B2B, uh, so the the companies. Uh, which we have to find with the marketing. Great. Thank you. And I noticed Philip has joined us. Hey, Philip. Yes, uh, I also have a question um, regarding um, the aspect of uh, professional help via the app. Um, so um, how can I imagine um, that this uh, goes about? Um, is this a direct contact um, for uh, to the police? So if I'm in a, or if a woman is in an emergency situation, um, she can uh, immediately contact uh, the police or is she also able to uh, contact a counseling center or emergency uh, support center of some sort? Um, yeah, there's the SOS function and it allows to send, uh, to press the button. And when you press the button, it directly sends um, an information to three of your contacts, which you, of course, um, activated before. And um, also to, you can um, also include three uh, companies and also the police. So a lot of people get informed that if something happens, uh, really someone will help you. And uh, also the geolocation will be sent to these people and uh, the police. And so everyone can come and help you. And also one minute audio um, will be recorded so that it's also documented. And also under this professionals, we meant not this emergency call, but uh, in this app, uh, there's available uh, forums where you can uh, share your experience, like uh, if you had uh, violence against you. So they're all, not only meant police, but also psychologists or doctors that can help you and you can text them anonymously So and you will get help. So that we, that's what we meant on the professionals. Okay. Well, thank you. A big thanks to the Safe You team. And thanks to Philip. Thanks to Shika for the questions. Great job, Safe You. Good presentation. And thanks for joining the stage with me. So I invite next up, it's uh, We Use, uh, the Campus O2 team, please, from uh, that worked with We Use from Denmark. Now, We oh, Use, yeah. I know these guys. I like these guys. And hello. I don't know Hi. you yet, but I like you already. Hi. Welcome to the stage. How are you doing? I just this... tried to share my screen with you. Yes. Just give me a sec. No problem. Are we waiting on your colleagues too? No, nope, just me. They're they're in the universe for emotional support. I hope so. And yeah. for the questions yeah. afterwards, so. <laughs> yeah, we can hope. Okay, I yeah. see your slides. I see you and hear you. So whenever you're ready, go right ahead and start. Yes. I'm studying. Hi guys, I'm Birgit. Uh, this is the agenda for today, the outline for the next four minutes. So this is Hans. He has a lot of stuff. He has ice skating shoes in different sizes, books, toys, and also tools, 
like a drill, but he doesn't often use it because it's mostly in the basement, it's in the garage. On the other hand, we have Sonia. She just broke up with her boyfriend. She moved in a new flat in the same building like Hans, but she does not have a drill. Why? The drill belongs to her boyfriend. Oh, sorry, ex-boyfriend. So what we are doing, we connect these two with each other with wheels. Good things going further because it's a community and a sharing platform. So Hans can share his items he does not use with people from his community. They really need this stuff. And we were thinking, oh God, that's such a good idea. Community and sustainability. We will think, think big, think even bigger. And we found it. We platform. Our vision for you guys. Emil, I really hope you're watching this because we use is just the beginning. We have we drive, we have we on board, we learn, and we eat. And we eat, I want to present you today. Sonia loves food. She cooks a lot, her fridge is always full, but ah, she's not so good with like only for one person. She always cooks like really, really a lot. And her freezer is full, and she doesn't know what she is doing with the dishes. And on the other hand, we have still Hans. He's working seven to seven. Uh, he needs food, fresh food, fresh prepared food. But he's ordering pizza. He's going to the supermarket and he's getting frozen pizza. So let's bring the bone both together again with we eat. Food tastes better together. We eat connects people who love to cook and want to share the dishes with people who have no time or dislike cooking. And how does it work? Super easy. For tonight, for example, Ed is cooking red Thai curry. Uh, 5 p.m. is pickup time, so if you want a dish, just place an order there. Ed is confirming and he is preparing the dishes, like four he's preparing, and then you can pick it up or do a delivery. Because we are all in a community, we live close next by, so maybe the neighbor from next door is bringing your delivery with you. So what is we eat and what are the values and the benefits? Of course, convenience, it's super easy, user-friendly. We bring the food preparer with the eater together. We share with them from the community and bring them to talk, to um, share their recipes, and also to say, hey, what's your favorite dish? And of course, the sustainability, because it's getting produced what is consumed. We got no food waste. So we eat includes different features. Um, especially trust and reputation. So you can rate each other or do preferences. So what is with the revenue? We are going with reuse. We are um, yeah, like with the, we have three basic, we have three uh, packages, the basic, the community and the enterprise model. So you can add how big your community is. Is it like only a few people? Is it like big, like a company? We do business to business and you can choose from that. To give you an outlook, the WE platform has great potential in the area of community and sustainability. WE use is just the beginning of something really big in what is happening. We're doing collaborations with companies like Too Good To Go, HelloFresh, Uber Eats, or Game Music Kistle. So we can expand our the WE platform and also WE eat for the future. So Emil, we are happy to share our ideas with you and we hope you like it. Thank you for your attention. Amazing. All right. Thank you very much to the Wii U slash Wii platform. Yeah, very cool. All right. Um, so I looked at the jury to see. And yes, Philip already has a question. So come on in, Philip. And I just want to be clear. So we use is the part that's already developed, but everything else, including we eat, is sort of your recommendation on expanding it yes, out and creating exactly. more services. You're thinking like really big. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> Certainly seems like it. All right, so Philip is here to bring us back to reality. <laughs> Philip, we're thinking big. What's your question? Bigger. Yes, it's a, a, a big vision, a nice presentation. Um, I was wondering about the um, we eat as um, component that you elaborated on. So, um, for example, if I'm preparing a, a meal and I'm ready to provide other people with that meal, uh, will I? charge them or will I uh, not charge them? And what does that mean for me? Uh, will I have to like, um, am I selling as a business or as a private person? Have you given that a thought? And yeah, we have, 
Yeah, we have different options. We have P2C, we have also B2B. Like in the B2B context, um, when you do not have a canteen or something to go out eating, uh, maybe one colleague would love to share food and what to cook for you. And maybe the company will add some 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 payment for the vegetables, for the fruits, for the groceries. He's cooking for all the other people. Like you have that in the normal canteen. Normally, yeah, the company is paying something with that the extra value, so you don't have to pay that much in that field. When you have a, like P two C, um, the it depends on the models. I really hope that Jürgen is joining me on stage because this is his part. I'm not sure if you can add him on stage. Possible? Okay. Anything is possible Otherwise, if you believe No, you don't dreams. have to pay for it. You're getting like as much money so you can buy the groceries. Too. Okay. So, yeah. And the Thank other you. are paid per dish. So does that make sense? Well, I think it's also fair to say it's it's a nice recommendation to hand them and they probably know their customers and know how their customers want to pay as well, right? So it's something that they could play with too and see what works. I, I really like these ideas as we far as like, where the payment comes from. And Yeah, we had different revenue streams, like one is the other model, one is that one. We had like different options. Okay. Can you say the full name of your colleague? Jürgen Münzer. Okay, I hope cool. I do not interrupt him and just We're gonna, like, no, it's on okay. stage. We'll see if we can send him up to stage. So Elizabeth, Sorry. would you like to ask a question? Yeah, thank you. Um, actually, I just uh, found out that uh, Emil Bush in the uh, Q&A session had a similar question. Um, my question is, uh, there are pretty strict uh, regulations on gastro uh, gastronomy and uh, catering um, in Austria, at least, and there is a very str uh, strong lobby. So what did your analy analysis reveal in that regard? We, our focus was not actually in that factor, in that aspect, I have to say. We just mm -hmm. focused on the bigger picture and on the vision, how we can do like community and sustainability in a bigger view. Mm -hmm. So maybe we have to deep deeper in mm -hmm. that or to dive that. I think that could be interesting um, in choosing where to start with We Eat. Um, maybe yeah. Austria or another country might uh, might be a better place to start. Maybe I jump in here because our main focus in our analysis was actually that we focus on companies because we experienced that in our company at uh, Netconomy that it was really community building um, as one of our colleagues started to cook regularly on a regular basis. And we thought that might be really um, a sustainable model if you combine that idea with we offer you the service that groceries get carried into the company, somebody cooks them. And then you can uh, either contribute in cooking or eat the great food somebody of your colleagues was cooking and you um, enhance this cohesion so being part of uh, someone who cooks and maybe even learn how to cook if you're not able to so that was our starting point and of course if you expand it um, um, across a company or is it in a community then you have to think of those things you, mm. you mentioned but that was not our primary goal with that so we you can say it, what our focus was we eat business and uh, we eat uh, community would be a second thing to to elaborate on but of course that's, that's, thank you, thank you. i really like people. your idea it's great yeah. it's certainly a, certainly an ambitious and cool vision to set out there so emil i hope you're taking notes and uh, we'll follow up with you in you know five to ten years and see how see how far you've gotten on this vision but thanks so much to jürgen and birgit uh for the presentation and for the great ideas and analysis thanks very much so uh next up we have another we use team uh now from the yuaneum uh would you join me here yes hello it's very nice to have you here Hello, can you stage. hear me? I can hear you fine, but it's a little echoey. Perfect. Can you try Go ahead and say something again. Sorry? Yep, it's fine Oops. now. Okay, perfect. So go ahead and share your screen. Yes. Yeah, just one moment. Great. Yep. Okay, All right. the stage is yours whenever you're ready. Thank you. So we want to start our presentation with a short video to present you we use. So this is Anne. Anne is 26 years old, lives in Copenhagen and went to commercial school. She works as a secretary for Green ABC. 
She's a fashionista and loves to spend her money on sustainable fashion if it's affordable, but doesn't really care about crafty things. And this is Lars. Lars is 35 years old, lives in Copenhagen and finished his Master of Technical Engineering and now works as a technical project manager for Green ABC. He's a family guy and loves to spend his time in the garage building things, but doesn't actually need all of his tools. The problem is Anne doesn't even have a hanger to hang up her new selfie. What should she do? That's where WeUse comes into the game. With WeUse, companies, municipalities, or housing units can build communities in which members can rent and lend tools and other items. So Anne could just ask in the WeUse app, hey, has someone a hammer? And within his community, Lars can reply, yeah, sure, do you need any help with it? Without WeUse, Anne would probably buy a hammer. But with WeUse, she has a whole toolbox and a community to face everything. Now, please imagine the following scenario. Hey girl, what's up? Why are you so sad? Yeah, you know, I've been using this app we use for quite some time now, mm -hmm. and I totally love the concept of it, but it doesn't get me engaged. I haven't rent nor lent for a month now. I feel like people are not engaged in nothing anymore. Yeah, you're right. I know the app and it's really cool, but they do have a kind of engagement issue. But take, for instance, this game I'm playing right now, Woman, it has me hooked up. It has all these amazing features, and I cannot put that phone away. Mm. Yeah. <gasps> Steph, that's it. Gamification. <laughs> like what? Like, to have people more engaged and for Wii's to be more fun, the app should implement gamification tools and icons, like, mm, for example, an impact count. Yeah, and you know, they can have uh, this points system. So the people who land and share a lot, they can have these points and we can call them like karma points. Yeah. And you know what? What about rewards? People feel engaged when they can win something out of things, you know? So about vouchers or discounts for people who are cool ambassadors of the app. Awesome. People love rewards. And the vouchers could also be a great opportunity for we is to cooperate with other companies that share the same goals and values, like maybe um, to good to go. Yeah. So with all these gamification ideas, we is could enhance the user retention, their own reputation, and increase the revenue. And all these together can enhance the value proposition of the company. But Steph, these are just ideas. How do we put them into a strategy? Yeah. Girl, let me help here. The goal is to enhance the user retention, and that can be achieved by implementing a tracker for users to see their savings in money and CO2 emissions. With an increased portfolio in which users can not only read things, but also skills with an interlinked communities, the options and the motivation to help each other will expand. And finally, for gamifications, the tools can be included in a fun and thrilling way. So we use creates engaged communities concerned with sustainability for a platform that makes renting, lending, and helping more convenient than buying, leading to a more mindful consumption. Yeah, and all these strategies together can help to grow, triplicate the revenue and the user retention. With we use, we have a whole toolbox and a community to face everything. Yeah. All right. Congratulations to your team. Great job. Right at four minutes. And the first ever like group hug actually in person. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it, it feels very 2019. I love it. So, uh, the community, remember. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's also the ethos of we use is like bringing people together. So very cool. I like it. Uh, I already see a question from Denby. So Denby, why don't you come join us on the stage and ask your question? We're getting faster at this switchover thing. <laughs> We're getting better as we go. Denby, hi, welcome. Hi, hi. We are getting good at this. I felt like I figured it out this time on my end as well. <laughs> um, hi, I really love that. And I love how um, the direction you folks are taking this app. I think that that's really clever. I think also like, you know, we use is about sustainability and then really just like amplifying the same idea, right? So let's take already the platform of this and just make it even better. Um, but my question is around the gamification, like this is going to probably cost quite a bit of money. There's lots of changes and a lot of things that you're going to be adding to this app. 
um, is, or is that going to be reflected in like advertising costs or are there going to be any charges or fees or what's going to happen here to make this feasible? Well, we discussed with the team that they have a very um, great developing uh, team uh, within reuse and it's uh, going to be, let's say, easy part of this gamification, especially the counter, because the statistics are already within the app. Uh, so there is already like a math calculation of how much CO2 you can save. And also uh, an, an, a math formula can be implemented to calculate in terms of money, how much you are saving when you're lending on renting instead of buying an item. So that's the easy part. The karma points is basically, again, like an algorithm, like a system in order to give points to the people is going to involve a little bit of planning and yeah, uh, maybe some rework of the app, but the most important thing that is like the talent and the capacity for developing this, they already have it in house. So the cost we don't foresee is going to be much higher. And our idea was also like we would want to focus on the core business of the app which has to be enhanced in order for reuse to work properly. And investing into that would be of more value than anything else. Great, okay. thank you. Thanks, Denby. And we are privileged enough to have Emil from WeUse in the audience who has asked a question, which is, uh, well, Emil shares, super good job, guys, love the energy. Do you have any idea how to accurately track CO2 reductions. You mentioned that as a possible part of the gamifications. He clarifies, we don't want any greenwashing, which I think <laughs> is a pretty good point. So have you thought about, have you thought of gone into that CO2 reduction gamification part and put some thought into how that could work? Well, there is a math, we based our analysis in some math that also actually Emil team shared with us before. And uh, it is basically um, some systems that are, are also available by some companies and consulting companies that can help in these regards in order to calculate if you are um, if you are lending a specific tool, how much CO2 you could be saving for that mm -hmm. specific tool. So that has to be like um, consulted to have a more accurate value. But for example, in the presentation, we discussed like with 200 users using this app, uh, it um, counted for uh, like four tons of CO2. So uh, we are using the users count uh, and uh, maybe adding to this some consulting. If this X amount of people can, uh, instead of buying this specific tool, uh, lend it or rent it, then this is going to lead to, to this amount of saving. So we don't have the specific mathematic formula now, but some uh, available data that is already uh, in the environment out there and some consulting job will be requested to create a right formula per each item because we'll have to like adapt it to each item that is in the platform. Yeah, I think it's fair to say if we use measures that are social impact at all, they could kind of use that same measurement to pass the metrics onto the users individually, right? Exactly. So whatever they're using, they pass it on. Exactly. So we'll have to find out if we use measuring the social impact at all. But I know Emil is. So uh, yeah, that seems like, a, seems like a good suggestion. Okay, so thanks. Uh, and, and Emil himself says, good answer, smiley face. So how about that? <laughs> all right, so a big thanks to the second we use team here. Good job, nice to see you all in person. And thanks Thank for joining you. me on the stage Bye. here. Good job, see you. All right, so next up on the stage, we have two more presentations to go. And so I want to invite up the Spiritus team from Campus O2. Can the Spiritus team join me? Yes, hello, David. Hello. Nice Good to evening. have you here. And uh, do we have your colleagues joining uh, too? Yes, uh, she will be uh, joining too, but um, uh, maybe Valentina, you have to click on webinar. Uh, to get into this presentation. There she is. Hi, Hi there. Hey everyone. Hi. Welcome. It's nice to have you here. I have the exact same hanging plant thing behind you. It works like like magic. It scrolls all over the wall. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Great. <laughs> hey, great Bye. style things alike. That's all I'm <laughs> going to say. OK, so I see your presentation. I can see and hear both of you. So whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. So we had the great opportunity to further elaborate uh, the Unique Spiritus app. 
with Spiritus provides a platform to create a digital memorial of your lab prompts um, and keep their memory through the blockchain technology forever. Uh, after the death of your beloved ones, you have the opportunity to tell, share, and save the story. Create a story, add photos and videos, and immortalize your memory. Friends, family, and everyone who has something to share about the person um, is able to extend that memorial. Further, is it also possible to um, visit cemeteries uh, and explore the, the precious memories and stories of the people nearby? This is all possible uh, through the biggest life story platform, Spiritus. Following up on that, I want to tell you a little story. A few years ago, I had the chance to talk to my great uncle about his past. He told me about his youth helping his father on the farm, their horses Max and Moritz, and his wish of going abroad. He went to Switzerland and spent most of his life there. And eventually, in his, in his retirement, he moved back into the, his hometown to spend his last years with his family. Unfortunately, he died three years ago. And thinking about it, those informations would have been lost if I did not have the chance to have this talk with him. Uh, personally, I don't want this to happen to me. And therefore, we wanted to create a platform where you can personally store your created memories year by year. Provide greeting messages for all your loved ones after your death. Immortalize the timetable of your life. Create a network to stay infinitely connected. And we also uh, want to introduce a system where you can make a 3D picture of yourself, which uh, would then be accessible uh, together with the highlights from your past by simply scanning a QR code placed on your uh, tombstone. And last but not least, the best part about it is uh, that you are in charge of your own information. Uh, sorry. Uh, with our technology, it would also be possible to get private violin concerts from Mozart near to his grave, just by simply scanning the QR code with your uh, mobile phone and enjoying the music. The pol uh, possibilities are limitless. Thank you for your attention. All right, great. Thank you so much. Another thing I didn't think I would see today is violin concert by Mozart's grave. So now we're really covering the full spectrum of things that can exist. Ashika and has also a question. We're talking about the past. Yeah. We had the future, not the past as well. We've covered all time. And that's what I hope to cover every time I moderate something. Discuss the past, discuss the future, oat, oat milk, Mozart. Shika, you're here to ask a question. The floor is yours. Hi, everybody. Quick question. I, I am familiar with Spiritus already, uh, and I really couldn't understand what is that you were adding up to what well, existed previously. Could you clarify that for me, please? Uh, the first part is... Uh... Uh, there were some concerns during the pitches uh, about the uh, data protection. So you, uh, the um, the thing they uh, they discussed was uh, you make uh, a page or whatever uh, for your uh, for one uh, who already died, and uh, there were some concerns about the data. Uh, because you're not legally allowed to use the data of uh, someone who has passed. And so we want to uh, put it back to the people so that they can make a page of themselves. And um, so the data belongs to you and you can make uh, whatever you want with it. Okay, quite interesting. So you avoid the data problems of the dead by having them sort of make the data themselves consent to it while they're living. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, yeah, interesting. Um, I look to other jury members. I'm not seeing questions, so I'll ask one. All right. So earlier I had kind of the same question about the oat milk going from B2B to B2C, which is to me as a somewhat of a startup person, this seems like an obvious answer uh, that you want people to memorialize their life before they die as opposed to after they die. So why do you think Spiritus hasn't done this? Why will this be a new strategy for them? Uh, I think because the 
do not want to make it like another uh, social media like Facebook or whatever. Mm. Uh, if you do it like that and already post it uh, as soon, uh, at the moment that you are living, uh, it would be another social media. But that's not what we are suggesting. We are suggesting that after your death, uh, the, those informations will be accessible. Okay. And explain the QR code a little bit more. The idea, this is another another potential service that they could do, yeah. right? Putting QR codes, they would put those on graves? Yeah, exactly. Because um, uh, Valentina had this idea, and it was uh, really great. Uh, so you have those tours on the uh, cemeteries of Vienna for uh, for example, uh, where a Mozart has his grave or also Falco. Okay. Uh, and there are some tours available. Uh, some, uh, some people are talking uh, who died there and uh, what was special about them. And so now with the QR code, it would be possible for normal people to tell the stories of normal people and uh, having it accessible like forever. Cool. Okay. Very interesting. So you're saying maybe in 10 years, I take a walk through a graveyard and I see QR codes on the graves. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Thank you. you we talk about the past now, but we also talk about the future. See, we cover everything. So thank you very much, both David, Valentina. I don't see other questions from the jury, so I think you're off the hook. So thank you for the thank presentation you. and for your analysis. We have one more team which is we're going to try again with Christoph and D-Girl Lab, uh, who is going to first tell me if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Hi, Christoph, can you hear me? No, we just lost Christoph again. OK, so we're going to try and get Christoph back. But look who we found. It's the distraction time filling bobblehead. Everybody look at the bobblehead and don't think about the fact that we're filling time. Okay, now the bobblehead goes away. And Christoph is back. See how well it works? It's perfect. Uh, Hello, Christoph? I hope Hi. you can hear and see me. <laughs> I can hear and see you, Christoph. Yes. Perfect, perfect. So, so many technical issues. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Um, don't worry. Do you have I'll, a presentation? I'll try that you to can make share up for it with a great presentation and uh, even better idea uh, on how to uh, improve an already pretty good idea. All right. Uh, do you, would you like to share some slides? Yes, of course I do. Um, I'll just share my screen and open the PowerPoint. I hope you can see everything. I can see it. I can hear you. Everything's great. Whenever you're ready. Perfect. Um, I'll start straight ahead. Um, all right. So um, the company that we took a closer look at was uh, the Girl Lab. Um, what does uh, the Girl Lab do? Um, basically, it's a platform to get more girls into technical professions. Uh, that means uh, students um, between, I don't know, 12 and 18 years old. Um, uh, we have uh, the uh, way of teaching in the metaverse. So it's a very um, yeah, new approach. Um, we want to focus on uh, technical topics like 3D planning, web design, and um, in different way of uh, online training sessions, we want to improve uh, digital skills uh, to young females, basically. And um, the way of doing it is in a very interactive way in uh, the metaverse. And um, our first thought of that was, okay, um, we can improve that by just uh, enhancing it to uh, an even greater audience. And um, the best way of ex explaining this is telling you a story. Uh, I want to tell you the story uh, of Michael. Michael is um, the person, personal uh, developer uh, in an uh, HR department. So he's organizing uh, trainings and developments uh, for all the employees in a big company. And he has a big problem. Um, uh, when he do uh, online classes, um, the people are not really interacting. Um, the attention level is not the best. Uh, there's yeah, not a lot of uh, questions going on. And uh, Michael wants to improve that. Um, and how does he improve that? He used Diga Labs already set up a metaverse system to teach uh, uh, new digital assets uh, to the employees. So, um, Basically, um, the quality and the participation will increase by doing that. At least that's what we hope. 
um, because the existing training is way too straightforward and uh, monotonous. And um, I think the metaverse will enable uh, a lot more ways of uh, doing interactive uh, lessons. So um, at last, I want to say that the further training for the uh, permanent stuff is often difficult um, because it's too unattractive. So um, what's the background uh, to that? Um, a lot of companies in Europe uh, already count on digital channels and there's a lot of uh, IT industry jobs open and uh, they have to be filled somehow. So companies are really struggling uh, to get like uh, new developers or uh, new designers, um, UX artists, for example, uh, digital marketeers, but they do already have a lot of stuff uh, in their companies and um, they already offer a lot of uh, possibilities to uh, train their stuff. Um, but we think that it could be even better by um, making more interactive courses in the metaverse, uh, as well as uh, adapting the uh, training plans. And um, we think it's um, a big uh, benefit that uh, the Girl Lab is already experienced in uh, creating uh, trainings and uh, contents for those trainings. So um, they can be kind of a consultant and help to make the retraining of the existing staff uh, in big companies more effective. Um, and that's also more effective for the big companies themselves because it's uh, cheaper to retrain uh, your current stuff uh, than to uh, hire new stuff. So uh, our idea is to make uh, parts of these uh, trainings for big companies uh, to uh, make them more uh, digital so that the parts of the training are uh, held digitally. Um, we hope or <laughs> we think that the participation um, from the home office uh, will be much better. Um, the hey, trainings Christoph, can be made. Christoph, yes. I hate to, but you have a four minute time limit and you're already past it. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks for the attention. Um, most I'm, I'm, I'm going to do one thing to help you, though. I'm going to ask the first question. Okay. Yes. But you have to you have to answer this question in under a minute. You promise me? <laughs> I'll try to. <laughs> in under one minute, what is the solution? You can keep this slide up if you want to, but just try and summarize in one minute what is the solution that you offer to, uh, um, to we the widen up the target audience uh, to um, all, all um, trainees from uh, companies. So um, we want to target especially the HR department um, to uh, offer better trainings for their staff. And we want to use the setup that uh, DGAL app has already created. And we want to um, um, use the experience that DGAL app, uh, app has in creating a great um, content and uh, great lessons and um, help big companies to get their trainings more effective. Okay, so more of a approach B2B uh, to a B2B try to do- b approach, yes. And they're not currently doing B2B trainings, in-house trainings at corporates? Um, they're starting to do that, um, but not in uh, for that target group that we uh, advise them to. Okay, and Shika has joined us. Hey, Shika, I love every time your camera turns on and you have this you have this kind of Christmas hat, and I just it's so great to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, it's your floor. Seriously, twenty first of December, everybody. Let's let's cut some I slack. Have, okay? I don't even have anything Christmassy. <laughs> no. Right, Go ahead, Christoph. You made me very intrigued right now because the USP of Tigger Lab is to teach tech to girls. And you are suggesting, you know what? No, let's not. So I'm confused. Or maybe it's the corporations <laughs> that are run by girls. I mean, um, what I didn't make clear is um, it, it's hard as a startup when you're not properly funded um, to have the budget to bring those ideas to young girls. And um, because of that, you have to increase your budget and that you do by getting more revenue. You get but more that's, revenue that's by um, broadening up your target audience. That was our main idea behind it. Hmm, I, I, I don't so, think so. So there's an organization that's mentoring girls in tech, and you would say the idea is to broaden the target audience 
to mentor, to do trainings and to mentor girls in tech, but then also do sort of corporate and in-house trainings. Yes. Do I summarize um, correctly? We want to basically um, finance the uh, main approach of uh, Legal Lab by widening uh, the target audience in the business and offering the setup that Legal Lab is creating for younger girls and um, offer it as a product um, to big companies. But not abandoning the trainings. No, 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 not of course abandoning. Of course, Broad not abandoning it. at all. That was <laughs> really that's. Um, uh, we were like uh, getting our heads smashed of how can we get more funds for like okay. making the ideas of, of young girls going more into the digital jobs. Sure. And, uh, now I understand. Solution. Thank you. Because I was very, my heart was very confused, but now I do understand. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying it to me. Yes. Listen, we have to watch out for Zika's heart in these things. She has a very big heart, so we have to watch out. And one on her finger, too. <laughs> Philip, we've come underdressed for Christmas, but I still give you a question. Please go ahead. The floor is yours. <laughs> yes, uh, I was uh, wondering um, more on the content side. Uh, what kind of do you have any uh, specific trainings in mind that you want to provide to uh, company staff? And why would you think that the metaverse would be a suitable platform for that kind of trainings in comparison to or e-learning platforms or other common uh, learning platforms? Yeah, um, our uh, main idea behind this was as more and more jobs, um, also in big companies, get um, automated, um, the, the staff has to develop. And uh, they sometimes have to develop for from their core um, task. For example, a sales manager, there won't be 50 sales manager in 10 years in the same company. There might just only be 25. What are we going to do with the other 25? We could use them, for example, to make them um, into uh, yeah, digital uh, professionals. Uh, is it uh, digital marketing or designing? Um, we want to keep them in the company. Uh, we want to keep their knowledge in the company. And we want to train them um, for the needed jobs. Um, by the metaverse, um, we want to use the same exact uh, setup that uh, has uh, been proven uh, valid um, for young girls to be more uh, interesting and interactive to get more attention and uh, interest and interactivity into these courses. So uh, that was our approach. All right. Thank you very much, Christoph. Thanks, Philip and Jika, for coming to ask questions. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the final pitch. So thanks, Christoph, for uh, ending our pitch session. Uh, it was nice having you, Philip, Jika. Thank you for the, all the great questions. And as well to uh, Danby, to Elizabeth, thank you. And so now I'm going to invite to the stage Barbara, who's going to tell us a little bit about what comes next. And Christoph, if you want, at the bottom of the screen, you can click backstage, and you'll head backstage. Barbara, nice all to right. have you back. Welcome. We hello, got through all hello, the pitches. Hello. How are you feeling? I yeah, I looked a bit like I slept, but I really didn't. It was really um, amazing to watch all these yeah. uh, pictures, and I wanted yeah. to say something now like this. Can you see that? I can see it. It's exciting. It's mm. bubbles or it's not, streamers. Yeah, it's not going as well as I thought. I just had this um, birthday oh, yes. thing, so I thought um, I'm gonna do a yeah. You did it. And so, now look at all these party reactions. I just want to let you know what is happening right now. Okay. Um, the next, um, let's say, 10 minutes, uh, we go uh, to backstage with the jury members to um, get clear of who the winners are. Okay. So for the jury members, it's a bit early now, but generally it would be nice if you accept the invitation to the stage again. So from there, we take you backstage. The second thing to all um, viewers, spectators, however you want to call it, is... Um, please, please, please change your name right now from everyone who was a team. Change your name to the venture you, was, you were working on, then the university, and then the project. This is really crucial that we can bring you on stage in case uh, you are a winner. So it's really nice to bring the whole team up on stage and to say woohoo to everyone. So please do that right now. Yeah, otherwise so, we only bring up maybe one of your colleagues and then you don't get the credit or none of you. And, and then there's this sad moment where I have to accept the award on your behalf. We don't want that this. would be quite annoying. So it's this terrible. is what happens now. And in the meantime, while the jury is backstage discussing the project, 
Mr. Connor Settley is up to entertaining you all. Yes, that's terrible news for everybody, but <laughs> I'll do my best. No, I think he's okay. doing well. <laughs> so you go, you go sequester with the jury, and I will I uh, go hold backstage, down the and here. we meet again in ten minutes. Let's say eighteen twenty-five, and we're all back. That sounds good. Okay, thanks okay. a lot, Barbara. Ciao. All right, so for everybody else, welcome. You're stuck with me. Uh, now, I just wanna be clear. If you wanna set a little timer on your phone or your watch for 10 minutes, walk away from your desk, turn off the sound, go get a drink, go to the bathroom, get a cup of tea or a coffee or a beer or wine or anything and come back in 10 minutes. That's also okay. You're welcome to do that. Nothing important is gonna happen in the next 10 minutes. And I say that because in these 10 minutes, we're just gonna, we're gonna dive into the mind of Connor. So it's a startup competition. So do I pitch on business models? Do I talk about marketing? Do I talk about pitch training? Do I share a business wisdom? Absolutely not, no, no, that would be too normal. So instead, I'm gonna walk you through what I think is one of the funniest stories in music history. So today, we are going to the world of jazz. Allow me to share with you one of the best jazz albums of all time. It's called Kind of Blue. Maybe you know it. Uh, and if you know it, then great. This might be a review for you. But basically, Miles Davis in the 19, late 1950s got together basically the seven best jazz musicians of all time uh, at that moment. Cannibal Adderley, Paul Chambers, James Cobb, John Coltrane on tenor, uh, Bill Evans, Wynton Kelly, and got them into a room. And he said, I've written a small handful of songs. I think it's only about six songs. They're very simple, but I've written them. Let's just play them. And they took the first take, the first try of every single one of those songs and it turned out to be one of the most beautiful jazz albums of all time. It was totally improvised. People like John Coltrane, he shows up. He's never heard the song before, ever. He shows up, plays it for the first time, and it's just beautiful. The really simple songs, very improvisational. And it turned into a, a lovely, lovely, lovely piece of jazz history, including uh, this song called So What? Oh, and I didn't share it the right way, so I'm going to share it now with sound uh, and optimize it for video clip. And then I want to share with you a little bit of So What. I'm going to skip ahead. Sorry for those who know the song that want to hear the bass, but. So you've gotten a feel for how Kind of Blue sounds. If if you have a jazz lover in your life, they're going to know about Kind of Blue. And it's a lovely, it's one of the most sold jazz albums of all time. So every jazz fan knows about it. So I, why did I tell you this? Why am I showing you this music? Because there's this really funny story that comes off of this experience that Miles Davis and the rest of these guys had, which is John Coltrane, the tenor player. He's one of the best tenor saxophone players ever to live. He showed up and thought, this is the coolest thing. It sold a lot of albums. Just write songs, bring guys together and just improvise. First take of all of them, it was very organic. And he thought, I'm gonna do this too. But he did his a different way. And before I tell you about how he did his, we have a quick music theory lesson. This is what So What looks like from a chord perspective. Now you don't need to know what you're looking at, it's okay. But you'll notice that there's only two chords written on this entire thing. It's D minor 11, and E flat uh, minor 11, right? So 
you don't need to know what that is, but just know there's only two of them. So D minor 11, 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 Okay, uh, that's that can be difficult for somebody who's making up a solo. They have to follow the chords, but there's only two chords. So what is such a nice song? And if you learn how to play jazz, it's actually one of the first songs you can learn to improvise over because it gives you practice getting that chord change. But it's very slow. So very nice, very easy to learn improvisation. So John Coltrane, uh, who is on this album. He decided, you know what, I'm going to do this too. And he spent about nine months going back to his studio and writing some of the most complex jazz music that anybody in the world had written until that point. And he put it together in an album called Giant Steps. And this is uh, Giant Steps. It's an album by John Coltrane. It's also one of the most famous jazz albums of all time. But John Coltrane brought people together and they handed them uh, this. Now, um, you don't need to know what you're looking at from a musical perspective again, but try and count the chords. <laughs> and they go this fast. Chord, 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 and then you start over. So every time I said chord, every note that you are allowed to use changes. So it was just Chaos. I mean, now bebop had been invented before, of course. Miles Davis had essentially invented bebop on heroin in the early 1950s. But so this was nothing new. The speed was nothing new. Fast changes was nothing new. But the reason that this was called giant steps is because the chord progression, the difference between the chords was taking all these giant steps. I won't explain why, but musically, no musician would ever predict that this was going to happen in this way. It, it messes with your brain. And so that's why Giant Steps is one of my favorite jazz recordings of all time, because this guy, John Coltrane, bit of a jerk, but legendary tenor saxophone player showed up and just handed everybody that he brought uh the best of the best jazz musicians of the time and i don't think this is gonna show who uh yeah it doesn't say the person oh yeah but tommy flanagan is the guy that i wanted to talk to you about tommy flanagan was the piano player right so he shows up to play this massively complex piece that he's never played in his life before he just trusts John Coltrane. This guy's been playing with Miles, right? Like, I'm going to show up. It's going to be cool. It's going to be easy. No, 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 no. This was so incredibly complex. I'm going to play you two parts of it, which is I'm going to play you the beginning and part of John Coltrane solo. And then I'm going to play you Johnny, uh, Tommy Flanagan solo on piano. So here we go. This is Giant Steps by John Coltrane. John Coltrane is making this up, what he's currently playing. For those of you who aren't familiar with jazz, he's making up all the notes. All he sees is all of these chords that are changing and he's inventing a melody over it. It sounds like chaos. And for those of you who might not like jazz too much, it might sound terrible, but that's okay. He's 
playing actually musically very brilliant stuff because he's had nine months to work on it. Now, the rest of the guys in the band actually haven't. So I'm going to switch you all the way down to the end of his solo when Tommy Flanagan takes over on piano. So Tommy Flanagan is trying to play on piano chord, 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 chord 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 in a pattern that nobody had ever put on paper before so already he's struggling to just play the chords behind and again Tommy Flanagan is probably one of the best jazz pianists of the time uh, so let's hear him try and solo what you'll hear is Tommy Flanagan trying to solo and then John Coltrane this huge jerk uh, has something to say about it about halfway through the piano solo so here we go let's listen again Okay, here's Tommy Flanagan. Searching, trying to get it. It's lost. Again. It's lost again. It starts to give up. Can't do anything now. And then John Coulter. So it's one of the most famous moments in jazz because John Coltrane jumps in on Tommy, Flan Tommy Flanagan's solo and just finishes the rest of the solo because the guy can't play it. Now, the sad thing is they actually did take two takes of this. So you can find there's a there's an album that has the alternative take of Giant Steps that you can find. Tommy Flanagan plays a really nice solo, actually. Uh, but in reality, they went with the first take because John Coltrane's a jerk and uh, that stayed on the album. So. That's the interesting connection between two of the best jazz albums of all time and the funny story of why John Coltrane is an absolute jerk. Um, but uh, I'm going to give myself some time off now, which is five minutes. Uh, so I'm going to leave you with more uh, jazz and I'm going to put back on kind of blue because right now I'm uh, in more of a chill jazz mood. So I hope you enjoy kind of blue for the next five minutes or so until the jury comes back. Thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. You can listen to John Coltrane. He's going to have a solo soon on this chart, too. And he sounds really beautiful. It's much more accessible and understandable and cool than Giant Steps. So here's more Kind of Blue for the next five minutes until the jury comes back. Thanks, everybody. Well, not five minutes. The jury is ready now or soon. So that's it. That's your jazz history lesson. And uh, here I see Peter Brook is back. I see we're joined by Zika. I want to know first, how did you know John Coltrane? Oh, Peter, <laughs> you missed... You missed literally, and I'm not kidding, a 10 minute lecture on the history of jazz and John Coltrane. That's what I use that time but, for. But this this is where the real fun starts in terms of jazz, you know? Okay, uh, I, I won't tell you about the, the Jazz City Club in Montreal where I was dancing and, uh, and having fun with John Coltrane in 1976. Wow. Are you kidding? Good. So now, now you really? finally, finally owe me respect. I, you know what? I think you might be right. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, the second thing is I wanted to know from you is, is where is Bubblehead now? Where is Bobblehead? 
he he hides sometimes and then he just suddenly he just pops up you never uh, can see him coming but uh, the question is why does he have a beard why does he have a beard well, is I it because a... of christmas <laughs> okay <laughs> good uh thank you very much barbara for organizing this thank you very much chica for being so present and so i mean christmasy strong the wonderful thing about uh innovation is something which I think is really important. When you look at all the things which we did doing on innovation is that we are global in spirit and in orientation and local in terms of impact and presentation. And I thought that uh, the presentations today and the projects themselves are really doing this in a very unique, very special, and also a very authentic way. What I really liked was how everybody got in there, how everybody put their heart in there and how everybody carried their heart forward. And uh, some of uh, the presentations did this better than others, but we'll talk about this um, possibly later on. The other thing is that when you work like this, interdisciplinarity, which we talk in universities all the time in terms of education and so on, becomes a very different kind of reality because it is on the issue, on the project, on the very concrete implementation. And this is what makes then the entire exercise so worthwhile for the engagement. What I really liked about the presentations is that uh, people were on the one hand, really going very deeply into the projects, but that they are not just using visuals, but they looked at how to dynamically visualizing something. And many of them were really didactic, which means in the sense of trying to anticipate the intended audience, bring this audience in and then using and I thought this was really great, dialogical formats to involve the audience, but to involve the audience in such a manner that it was directing to where the project actually was going. And I think this was just absolutely fantastic. Some of them did even go further and put around an entire story, presented the plot, presented the characters, worked on this dynamically and put the value of what the project is through the story to the user, to the audience. And I think the jury really loved it and was privileged by this. Those who acted with a custom, a custom, uh, a costume changes, uh, Connor, you just really flew through the, the microphone and also the screen. I thought that you're really getting high on that, but uh, uh, I, I think that uh, this needs uh, needs a special, I mean, a special interesting pitches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the award, uh, the, the basic the innovation costume award. Maybe we should do that. Now, uh, I ask you, Connor and Barbara, are you ready that I uh, take the privilege of announcing who the winners are? Because we have three winners, they are not ranked, and uh, I'm ready to tell you what they are, who they are. I would just uh, want to hand over to Shika for a very short sentence about the talk of the jury in very general, what they liked and uh, what could be done perfectly better or what was really good so you just want chica to have another say after i have said so much things i'm sorry <laughs> really. yes. chica are you ready for that <laughs> it's good for the ego peter come on she's yes, the head of the program please <laughs> please be, be kind to me there are other people listening to us Guys, you did a very, very good job. As Peter mentioned, uh, the way you conducted the presentations was very, very creative. And definitely it makes the whole difference, especially when you are, as a jury member, when you are listening and watching to one pitch after the other, the way you could engage us within your narratives and everything was really, really special. I believe that if 
there is some room for for improvements in terms of separating better uh, what was given to you and what was the improvement you are proposing. And for some groups that wasn't <coughs> not that was not clear enough. And yeah, that's it. But on a general note, it was very good. Yes, I think that uh, this separation uh, is one thing which is very important for the clarity yeah. of the receiver in terms of who is actually responsible for what. Exactly. And exactly. that is something uh, which, which really, I mean, where I think most, if not all, presentations could have an improvement, but I leave this actually uh, to the wonderful uh, teachers, uh, Christian Friedel and Michael Teller, to uh, expand on this because uh, it's not us to do this. Uh, they will hand out the grades, and um, I'm, I'm sure that they will go out, give out A plus 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 pluses and then A minus plus minus plus minus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Barbara, anything else which we should uh, do? And um, Go ahead and announce the winners, and we will try to put them on stage. Okay, I'm blocked by the absence of Bubblehead. Connor? Yes, bubblehead. Uh, <laughs> does he pay attention now? Can, can he not? Okay, very good. Okay, so we have uh, two winners from one of the uh, Universities of Applied Sciences and one winner from the other University of Applied Sciences. So uh, the first winner is no, it's not the first winner. Is one of the three winners is D box presentation from Lithuania from Fhionium because they were very dialogically. <laughs> Now, I have a surprise for you. This, the, an additional winner is D-Box presentation from Lithuania, but this time from Campus 02. What? Yeah! All the very dialogical. <laughs> and as especially great in terms of involving the user and being creative in narrative and staging was, we use Denmark from FH Joneum. Okay, can you see the winners? Can we yes, hear I the see. winners? I see the box we use. Turn on your cameras. Hello. We you won. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. So we see we use from the, uh, from FIU Neo. You did very well. Very impressive. Very engaging. I want to fly to Graz and join you and hire you and uh, give you, I mean, I, th I, don't, I don't think that you have to continue with your studies, actually. I think you can, you can take <laughs> Christmas time off and sail and revolutionize Silicon Valley. Can, can we mute Peter? Mute Peter really quick, please. Can we? <laughs> what, what? Okay, D-Box, okay. e FIU Neom. You're sitting there lonely in one little office. That's not a way of celebrating. Good. And then we have, uh, we have, uh, whom else do we have? Uh, we have also- We use, we have we use, we have D-Box and the other D-Box. Okay, Yay. where is D-Box? Yeah, Calling in from Thailand. He's already gone to Silicon <laughs> Valley, Santa Monica. I can see. To Koh Samui in Thailand. Are you in Thailand? Oh, that is- mm -hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> That's what they tell us anyway. One more. I have no tsunami. 
Guys, do you know what you're going to do with the 1 million euros award that you're going to get? I'm kidding. Uh, can, can, somebody, can somebody mute Jika? Mute. Jika, <laughs> I'm going to rob your bank account. <laughs> Good. So let's Congrats, everybody. Up. Congrats, D-Box teams. They're just joining us now, too. Congrats. Turn on your videos, please, so we can at least do a um, screen test. Yes. Can Connor, we, can I'm sure you're having that? some ideas what we can do for the winner's picture. Uh, Hi, Victoria. Yes. So ev do we have everybody on video? Yes, we do. Okay. So everybody give a nice celebration pose. Yeah. Yes. 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 Give a little dance. Give a little dance. Everybody best dance. Mark. You too, everyone. Who's taking the screenshot? Somebody better be. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to be so heavy. Sure, somebody's somebody's here. A celebration. How about that? Can I stop celebrating? All right. Yes. No, no, you, you need <laughs> to keep celebrating. <laughs> Best celebrator of all. I have to swipe the floor now. There's a million confetti. <laughs> yeah. so, but I know that all these um, students are going to celebrate tonight in Graz. I heard someone telling me that. So have a nice time there and enjoy. Everyone, even the ones but, who didn't win. But you before, before you go, before you go, take out your calendar for the year 2023, which is next year. Search the month of April, which is the fourth month. And then mark the 26th to the 28th, because this is when the European Young Innovators Festival is going to happen face to face, person to person, skin to skin in Graz. And everybody is invited to bring to their, best, their best friends along. Okay, I was not finished, Sika. Everybody is invited to bring their best friends along. I have a question to Victoria. Do you have a best friend? Uh, of course. <laughs> okay, how many best friends do you have? At least 10. Bring all of them. Okay. I will. <laughs> we, will be, we, will, we will be in the Seifenfabrik, we will be in the Domenberg, we will be on the Moorinsel. There will be lots of lots of things which will propel you, drive you, and give you a real boost in energy and love for the work you do. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Barbara, for organizing all of this and being such a great project leader. Thank you very much, Connor. You have been the most entertaining moderator I have heard today since 8 o'clock in the morning. And thank you, Chica. You have been the most well-dressed juror ever <laughs> on any 20th of December in any year of this century. Thank you all and keep well. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye, everybody. Ciao. Thank and you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, you. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank you. Merry Bye. Christmas. Okay, Connor, it's just us. Yeah, just us. Can we recording. go backstage for a second? Have you stopped the recording? I'm Hi, everybody who watched to the end of the recording. It's us again. <laughs> All right, sure. Let's go backstage. But you know, I'm not doing that. Alex is doing that. And um, okay, maybe backstage. let's go backstage.